Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are playing the final chapter of Tell Me Why. I'm really excited for this final chapter, especially because I feel like I just have so many questions. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting some answers. I don't have a great feeling about the story as a whole though. I don't, I, right now, I feel like it's not gonna be like a very happy ending. So I am very curious on my takeaway after we're done, but I guess we will just have to get right into it and let's go. Everyone pay attention. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, Take notes. crafty goblins faced the truth about the darkness in the big wooden house. It had come for the wise princess, driving her mad and causing her to attack them. When they started asking questions about the princess in the darkness, the goblins realized that no one else in the forest wanted to know the truth. So they dug and searched and asked hurtful questions, learning more about the wise princess than they had ever hoped to. But the search took its toll. The darkness was proving too much for Sister Goblin, and yet Brother Goblin kept diving deeper and deeper until Sister Goblin finally said, enough. And that was how the goblins found themselves separated again, hurt and confused, with so many unanswered questions and too many open wounds. I'm ready for these puzzles. I'm ready. Speed run right here. How did it end? It ended with the... Oh, awesome. yes. I remember. Wake up. It ended with us figuring out that Marianne wasn't saying I'm going to kill you to Tyler. It was her saying that to their dad in the boat. Whoever their dad is. If I had to guess who their dad was right now, I'm guessing that older guy that we saw on the boat on the way here. But even then, I don't think that's right. Or is that oh she's dreaming It's interesting that they're now like almost portraying Marianne as the mad hunter. Place for herself in this world, where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a wan woman alone in a deep and ancient wood. You killed me. It's 
so much going on in her weird dream. You killed me! Okay. Chapter three's title is Inheritance, okay? Hmm. Okay. I have no idea what that was in the beginning, minus a bad dream, but it has to mean something. Oh, always gotta stir up the tunes. Look at the snowman! The snowman was so derpy looking! Oh, did she sleep at her adopted dad's house instead? Because Tyler, I forgot Tyler and her did have a fight at the very end of last game. Morning, I started collecting the documents you need for your rental application. Left the file for you downstairs on the kitchen counter. If you're still coming to meet Dee for lunch, you can drop off the documents and I'll make some copies for you. Take it easy. Uncle Eddie. P.S. My favorite famous buck up buckwheat waffles are slowly growing cold in the kitchen. If you're still coming to meet D for lunch, you can't. He's right. Time to get my shit together. Yeah, right, because I'm getting Denise. Where's Tyler? What is going on? I'm, I'm getting lunch with Denise, I think, laundry. right? Ugh. Maybe later. There's not enough concealer in the world to erase the night I had. I guess she did just sleep here then, maybe. How did we go from being so alike to total opposites? I gotta think about something else. Now would be a good time to stop smoking and maybe do a detox. Ew, cigarettes. Oh. Gross, gross, gross. I guess I'll have to start fresh with these in Juno. Sachi has her mirror covered. What's this? Those crossing schedule. Is that me snowboarding? Nice. At least they've got a beautiful view. 
Not a bad view at all. What the? Oh. What the heck? Are you getting a memory right here? What's happening? I should probably eat something. God, I feel so weak. Wait, it was it's gone. Where'd it go? <sighs> so many months of snow boots ahead. He doesn't like this kind of attention, but he really does so much for the community. Dear Chief Brown, thank you so much for bringing our children home safe last weekend. Without you, they might have gone behind. Oh, gotten behind the wheel. And who knows what could have happened to them or anyone else. We'll always be grateful for your wisdom. And thanks again for keeping this office. Oh, off the books. They are good kids who made a mistake. And Lord knows how a police record can compromise a child's future. We know they will remember your words for a long time. But please rest assured that we will do whatever we can and make sure they understand the extent of what could have occurred. So they can raise awareness among their peers and the community. Nice. Don't drink and drive. I need to get all that paperwork together. Maybe that'll help me focus and clear my head. Dude, these houses are so cute. I love these houses. I wish Eddie's mom could have taught me how to do this. Wait, can we can we eat this in the fridge? Our waffles are in the fridge. Uh, yes. Okay, lunch with Dee Wednesday. Don't forget her birthday gift. Maybe if I make something for Dee, it'll help calm me down. What do we want to make her? Lots of... Oh, it's a crab hot pot. Oh, I want hot pot. Hot pot's so good. I haven't had hot pot in a minute. Oh, here's my waffles. Whoa, let's eat them first. First things first. I can't really eat anything right now. <laughs> what? But the waffles. He made us waffles. Here's the file. Just need my ID and pay stubs. Okay. We were oh, family. What the? Allison, how could you do this to me? These are like oh, popping fuck. up. I've got to think about something else. Focus. ID and pay stubs. All right, ID and pay stubs. Where would my ID be? In my bag. Here's my bag. Here is my ID. No ID here. Is there pay stubs in there? ID? Is it my wallet? ID. Here uh, we go. Here's my ID. That. Grab that. What the? This place is never much more than a bachelor pad, huh? There was so much I planned to do. All those sacrifices I made. And how do you repay me? Lying to my face. Wait, what? You're not my child. My clan deserves better. Please tell me that was like not a real interaction or memory that she has stop of Eddie. It, Allison, you have to stop torturing yourself. Just grab your pay stubs so you can get the hell out of here. Is that like her making stuff up in her head or? Ah, now I'm questioning Eddie. I thought Eddie was cool, but if that's Eddie and that's like a real memory, then. And then we know Eddie was there. Like, is Eddie uh, some, I don't know. Ah, what does it mean? Eddie loved his Mishka so much. What does it mean? What does it mean? God, the world feels so fucking small right now. I've got to find a way to get out of my head. What? What? Uh, Allison, please. Stand. What? Come on, Allison. Don't start. What is going on? I wonder what Michael would think about all this. Do you even get it? You swore, Allison. It's nothing. This is nothing. She's going crazy. Hold on, is that like not a thing I can take? What is that? <laughs> I thought that was like a little goodie I could take. Yeah, where do people keep pay stubs? I'm too young to know where they would keep pay stubs in this time. There isn't a T in the world strong enough to melt away this it's not here. Man. Hey, Stubbs. Hey, Stubbs. 
Hey, Stubbs. If I was a hey, Stub, where would I be? I mean, it has to be like a little, like, folder somewhere, right? It's none of this. That's our key. I feel like it would be up in the office, but can we even go upstairs? Maybe it's in, like, the garage somewhere? Can we go in the garage? Those are just CDs, records. Here we go. The paperwork's not down there. Oh, okay. To the office? Eddie looked pretty concerned when I came home last night. Oh, here we go. God. Feels like my head's full of screeching monkeys right now. This is his room? I'm glad he never pushed me to change my last name. No pay stubs. Still can't believe Eddie never told me he was paying for fireweed. Let's go through all his stuff. Hmm. I don't <gasps> think I know any Claire's in Delos Crossing, but I shouldn't be snooping in here. Oh, well, we are doing it. Might as well continue. Hey, put that down. Why? Why would you pick that up and then put it somewhere else if you don't want him to know that you've been snooping? Stupid. A secret keeper in her secret keep. Maybe there's something in the Book of Goblins that'll help me figure this out. Wait, is this like a... What? A secret keeper in her secret keep. I can't even interact Maybe with it at all. Maybe there's something in the Book of Goblins that'll help me figure this out. Well, well, I don't even know what it wants me to figure out. This is the story that we read the last time. Is this just like a metaphor? I don't think I even actually do anything with that. I don't think. I, I can't like really interact this with is it. Personal. Oh, well, let's read it. <laughs> My dearest son, I know I'm not getting better at this time, so I wanted to write you a few things down for you. Oh, I wanted to write a few things down for you. I'm sorry to be leaving you so soon. I had you late in my life, but I still thought there would be more time. It makes me happy to know you will have the clan when I am gone and you will have your auntie to look after you. You have always seemed to know when it was the right time to leave. For, from the time that you were a year old, you knew which shoes belonged on which feet, and you used to bring me mine whenever I was getting ready to go somewhere. I could never figure out how you knew I was ready to leave, but there you would be with my shoes every time. You never cried or made a fuss. You just helped me on my way. I hope this leaving will just be as easy, and though I won't need you to fetch me my shoes, I know you'll help me on my way. Your strength has always been to accept what it is and to do what needs to be done. I am so proud of you for joining the police force. People are going to look at you as a leader or look to you as a leader now. And I know you won't let them down. Please help the young people remember our way of life. We have thrived as a people since time before memory because of our cultured or cultural values. Don't let them lose that. Also remember how important it is to attend to everyone, not just the ones who fit in. It is our way to lift each other up. Everyone has something to offer to the community. They may not even see it in themselves, so you've got to show them, help them along their path as you've always done. Sorry, I'm like reading this a little bit weird, but remember when you uplift others, it makes you stronger too. And then whatever the heck, I don't know what that means at the end, but mom. See, like, she seems nice. Like, that's like a nice letter. Oh, yeah. What's going on with you? If you need help, Focus. I'm still missing some things. Back up there. Eddie must have been back and forth to Juno all the time to these shows before he got stuck here taking care of me. I don't 
think there's anything else in this room. I don't even think I need to be in here. I just snoop for no reason. Stop sulking. What? Can I go upstairs? Oh. I told him I wanted to stop messing with those memories. But he wouldn't listen. just words you left me Allison all alone and scared <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me maybe we should take a sip of water and a very deep breath not here Those aren't my pay stubs over here, right? That's just the coffee. Mm -mm. Where are these pay stubs? They're hiding from me. Not here. Not there. Where are these freaking oh folders? Here they are. Got it. Yay! Let's get the heck out of this house. So I don't know what's happening to us. Let's okay. go! I think I've got everything I need for the application. Where's that coming from? Yeah, what is that? Where did I leave my phone last night? Oh, it's her phone. I thought it was someone playing the piano. Ew, are we going down into the basement? Why did they make it so scary? And why were we in the basement? Something weird's gonna happen down here. that even mean what the what what it's like someone's gonna jump I... out at me no 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 i cannot deal with you right now where's our phone no no phone here i'm like terrified right now i think it's under that book actually not here or it sounds like it's under the book. What's ah, it doing here? Right. Well, girl, pick it up. Who's calling? Hey, D. Finally. Oh. I was starting to get worried. Why didn't you pick up? Yeah. Uh, sorry. I uh, I didn't have my phone on me. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure we were still on for lunch. Uh, yeah. Of course. I'm. Getting ready right now. That so? Because it kind of sounds like I woke you up. That's just how I sound. But anyways, I still have a few things to do before I can leave, but I'll be there. All right, hon. See you soon. <sighs> oh, Allison's better, stressing Allison. me out. Come on. Grab the file, get dressed, and head out. Or it'd be nice to make a gift for Dee. Yes, let's make her a gift. God. My hands are still shaking. I've got enough time to carve something for D. Let's do it. We're probably gonna cut ourselves in the process if we're shaking, but um, hopefully not. Oh God, this is dangerous. We're wood carving like our mom, because I know her mom used to wood carve, so that's I'm assuming why or how they picked it up, or Allison picked it up.
for making her a gift. Who are we doing a wolf? There are a lot of like wolf masks in um in this house. I did notice that that um Eddie has a lot of like stuff. Just a lot of stuff. You should have taken care of yourself first, Marianne. We deserve this. This is a totally oh, different life. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just always do that. Got your Christmas decorations there. Or what is Eddie this? I can't cope with getting rid of any of Carol's stuff. I miss you. Aww, Mishka, or whatever their name was. I forgot already. <sighs> he has fishing gear. And we know that. Whoever was out on that dog talking to Marianne last night, or that her last night, was had fishing gear. Permit. Edward Brown. Blah, blah. Names of other household members. Allison. Blah, blah, blah. But I mean, isn't like everyone fishing in Alaska? <laughs> also, like she did already see Eddie that same night, so I don't think it is Eddie. Tyler and I it should really bike make around much the lake. Sense to me. When we've patched things up. But really nothing makes sense to me in this game. But I feel like the door is going to slam. I think I've watched too many horror movies. Morning. Hey, Allie. Hey. Hi, guys. What are you doing here? Tessa and I were worried after you called in sick last night. She's busy at the cafe, but she sent over some coconut cake since you won't be making it in for lunch. That's nice, Tom. Thanks. I'm gonna head on inside. Freezing my butt off up here. I want coconut cake. Okay, uh, thanks. Is Tyler not around today? Uh, we did have a fight, but that's really not his business. No, he's, uh, busy. Out at the old house. I see. It must be hard to sell the place you grew up in. So many memories, right? Oh, it's okay. We'll get over it. I really hope so. So, Tessa told me a little bit about what happened at the cemetery. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry it got so intense. It's just, we really needed to understand why Marianne did what she did. Especially Tyler. Oh, of course, of course. She gets that. You two didn't say anything she wasn't already thinking. She spent years blaming herself. Well, she wasn't the only one involved. There was a lot of blame to go around. I'm glad you're able to see that. It seems like your brother, well, he's not nearly so forgiving, is he? He has been pretty harsh. Especially on Eddie. I feel like we, I've been doing we good. I'm tired of people lying to us for our own good. Yes, of course. Uh, totally reasonable. Though, I am sorry you're the one taking all the repercussions. I heard about the fight with your uncle. I really hope your brother appreciates your sacrifices. He will. I, I mean, he does. I'm sorry, but I, I'm pretty beat. Oh, of course. I'll let you rest. Tell Michael there's no need to hurry back. Okay. Thanks for stopping by, Tom. Bye now. Take care. Mm. Sorry for abandoning you out there. Pro tip? Avoid catching a ride with Tom at all costs. Did he talk about the new spicy chocolate bars? Yep. Hmm. And exactly what they do to his digestion. Oh, beautiful. Uh, What's up with him? I'm not sure I've ever seen him so eager to help. I think he and Tessa bad. are legitimately concerned. Plus, door-to-door uh, -door is part of campaigning, right? Yeah, I guess. 
Please can let those waffles sit there forever. Somebody eat them, please. Help yourself to some waffles if you want. <laughs> that's Eddie's way of saying I'm worried about you. Oh, that's cute. But I had a ridiculously huge breakfast, so I'm good. I don't know about you, but I just really need to get out of Delos Crossing. Well, we're on our way soon, right? Right. I don't know. I, Allison's being so I just weird. Got this feeling it's gonna fall through, and and I'm gonna be stuck here forever. That's not happening. We've got a plan. I'm glad you're here, Michael. Thanks for coming. Coffee and a friendly face, just what the doctor ordered, right? I just feel like cuddling up in front of the TV all day. Maybe finally binge that last season of Witches of Eldom. Then do it. Ah, uh, I gotta drag my lazy ass out to have lunch with Dee. Allison, what's going on? I don't know. Uh, okay, well, let's not be dramatic and say everything's going to shit. I mean, it kind of is, though, so she's not wrong. But let's just say Tyler and I fought because that's a little more narrowed down. Tyler and I had a fight last night. I was so excited to have him back, but what if 10 years was too much and we're too different? I don't think so. You just need to get to know each other again. Start with the small shit. Figure out what each other's favorite foods are, you know? And then build up to the big stuff. Yeah, that, that makes sense. The last few days have been a lot. And it's totally okay to be overwhelmed. You're gonna figure it all out. Families are fucked up. <laughs> They're basically fuck-up factories. You're right. I just need to relax. Let's take a deep breath. So, maybe this will cheer you up. I think I found the perfect place. Check it out. Pretty cool, right? Deposit's a bit high, but it's got two large bedrooms and a view of the channel. What, what's happening? Oh gosh. Honey, you're really going to give up our home to live in this ugly box? She needs to take a nap. Oh God. Allison? There's too Allison, much. Look at me. Too much. It's you okay? gonna happen. I'm just. Um, I need to. I I just need to sit down. Yeah, she does. She has to sit down. Maybe she should just sit in front of the TV all day and just been watch the show. It's okay. I got you. What's going on? I don't know. Michael seems cool. I feel like we just tell him, right? I mean, you might think we're crazy. Oh, well. Eh. God, what does she have everything? to lose? My anxiety is through the roof. I can't eat anything without getting sick. And then I've been seeing things. Memories. Of Marianne and me and Tyler when we were kids and Eddie and it used to just be stuff I'm pretty sure really happened but now I see them everywhere shouting every shitty thought I've ever had about myself I don't know how much more of it I can take that's intense I'm sorry has Anything like this happened to you before? Right after Marianne died, I had a lot of panic attacks, but nothing exactly like this. Come here, Allie. See, Michael's a I good friend. You. Okay, I hear you. You must think I'm completely nuts. No. I think you went through some really bad shit. You never saw anyone about it, right? Yeah, I, I've looked into therapists a few times, but they're all so far away and so expensive. Well, you know what I went through in 2011. 
I don't know if I'd still be here if I hadn't gotten help. You got that money coming in from the house. For our apartment in Juno. I don't want to bail on you. Look, I know you hate letting people down, but you gotta put your own oxygen mask on first. I get that. And so does Tyler. Thanks. I'll try. He's so sweet. I know this got <sighs> so real so I'm fast. Whoa. Today, but Tyler's crashing out there. Not sure if I'm ready to face him. If you want, I could go out there. Yeah, we could flirt he's more. Ready to talk. What do you think? Yeah, get Michael and yeah, Ty again together. I hope he'll talk to you, though. He's never been the best at opening up to new people. Want you my sure? drink? Yeah, of course. I don't mind trying if I might patch things up between you two. Oh shit, I'm gonna be late for my lunch with D. I still need to change and stuff, but I can drop you off at the store if you want. Sure, thanks. No, Michael, thank you for listening. I mean it. You're right, she did. She did tell her mom that she should should have uh, taken care of herself first. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. My brain, my brain is just always like reeling during during each of these chapters. This is definitely a lot more like mystery to this game than the Life is Strange games. So uh, I feel like I have so many questions, so many thoughts spiraling in my head. Trying to figure out exactly what the truth is and like what's going on or like who's suspicious, who's tru hey, trustworthy. Hey, beautiful. Are you okay? No. Was, girl, you look like shit. Hey, thanks I, uh, so much. I haven't been sleeping Appreciate well. it. Uh, here I am. That's how much I love you, right? Oh. Well, I appreciate us having a girl's lunch anyway. Just give me five minutes so I can finish off this paperwork. Oh, no rush. I need to drop off some stuff with Eddie. All right. Oh, uh, help yourself to some cobbler. Mrs. Romero sent it over after I caught her flasher. It's in the break room. You better hurry before Greg's kills it off. Mrs. Romero's cobbler? I'm on it. <laughs> I'll meet you in there when I'm done with this. I drop something off to Eddie, right? Cobbler. Hello, Miss Ronan. Hi, Gregs. Hey, Gregs. Hey, Allison. What brings you here today? Kitties. Just needed to drop off some paperwork with Eddie. The chief's busy right now, mm. but you could leave him in his mail slot. Ooh, these look like wild berries. Mrs. Romero must have frozen them over the summer. Oh, yes, she takes her cooking seriously. Very seriously. See, I would bake more. Try not to hang out upstairs too long. Okay. Chief's orders. Sorry. I would bake more, but listen, if I'm going to bake, I'm going to go all out, and I don't need all that unhealthy cake and everything in the house. Sounds like Eddie's busy. It shouldn't bother him. I should probably drop the paperwork here. Eddie's going to be busy for a while. Let's eavesdrop. Uncle's in there. He's really letting that guy have it. I probably shouldn't eavesdrop, but... I feel like we're gonna get caught. Oh, they stop talking! Go downstairs, go downstairs, go downstairs! I wonder how Uncle's feeling about me moving away. We haven't really scared. talked about it. This is not this guy's first ticket. Too scared to Probably stay. Won't be his last either. I dropped my stuff off upstairs, so I'm gonna go wait in the break room. Okay, hon. I won't be much longer. Oh, here's my slice. Hmm, <laughs> dessert for lunch. Pretty cool, right? Uh. Pretty cool, yeah. I've always had a sweet tooth. Got it from my mom. She baked darn near every day. Need to start being a little careful, though. Doctor's orders. Brenda may be in for it, too. <laughs> God, that kid can eat. Linda's pretty concerned, but, uh, growing boys, right? 
He needs the extra energy. He wants to let her in wrestling, and who boy, is he working hard. Damn. Sometimes I miss being full. You are not kidding about the cobbler. I this just cut him off! Batch ever. Right? He's just telling me a story, and I just. This cobbler's really good. Girl, what are you shut, having? Shut your mouth. Trout pie and uh, black radish. I'm on a diet. A cobbler diet? Hey, shh, 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 shh. I won't tell if you won't. My lips are sealed. We haven't had a three-pointer coffee break in a while. <laughs> you remember how that one shot of yours went wild and smashed the picture of old Chief Burke? I would yep. never do that. Couldn't show my Not face me. around here for a week. Eh, well, I'll let you in on a secret. Most people hated Burke anyway. Hmm. Your dad's a far better chief than he ever was. Oh, yeah. What you reading? Oh, uh, about that dock strike and the trouble these folks are causing for everyone else. Ugh. Hate strikes. What dock what strike? What is this? Paris, France? Come on. It's the only way most people have to get anyone to listen. What are they talking about? They're talking about none of your business, young Okay, lady. Greg's isn't a snoop like me. In your dog's kennel for the day, though. Sure, no problem. She doesn't care for it that much anyway. All right, I'll meet you outside in a minute. Then we will proceed with the prisoner's transfer. Okay. All right, everyone, look away. Act like we weren't just... Is she not done? Hey, Gregs. Girl, she said five minutes. Huh. So, what's the criminal underbelly of Delos Crossing been up to lately? Eh, poachers, vandalism, a few memorable cases of public indecency. Nothing too serious, which is fine by me. Boring is good, not like Juno. My daughter's always begging to move there, but that is not happening. Why? Juno's awesome. There's like actual things to do there. Drugs, that's why. Property crimes double the national average. People coming in all the time from God knows where. Oh, I didn't know that. <sighs> yes. Thank you, finally. Denise. Whew. Hey, sorry I kept you waiting. That's okay. No worries. You'll never believe it. We caught the mailbox bandit. And guess who it was? An animal. Hmm. An animal? Like... A raccoon, maybe? Have you been eavesdropping in on official police business? Nope. I've never <laughs> eavesdropped. Anyway, yeah, it's a raccoon. Delos Crossing's most wanted turned out to be some trash panda stowaway. <laughs> and this is how legends begin. Anyway, hun, so... I'm so sorry to bail, but I gotta run this little guy to animal control now. What? Probably best I take a rain check. No way. Oh, it's it's okay. Totally. No way! I understand. Duty calls. Thanks. I got you a present. Oh, uh, I brought you a little something to make up for missing your birthday. It's not much, but... You're kidding. I love it. Did you make this? I did. <laughs> Only one hour I ago, because like so I am a lucky. procrastinator. Delos Crossing's not going to be the same without you, girl. Oh, come on. This conversation right, is so slow. Holy cannoli. Right, oh my gosh, you're dragging this on. The pauses are like well, an awkward three seconds. Hands. Hey, your brother didn't tag along today? No. no. He didn't really want to show his face around here after the mess he made yesterday, huh? What do I want to say back to that? Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. It got kind of out of hand. Don't worry. We know it wasn't your idea. Whoa, it actually kind of was. We're all worried about you. This isn't the Allison we know. The Allison you know? Yeah, the sweet, smart girl who'd never hurt anyone on purpose. I know you two and the chief made peace, but I gotta say, it ate at him all day. Okay. Mm we did what we had to, to get what we needed. This isn't really any of his business. 
So can I skedaddle out of here, please? All right. What? I just want you to be careful. I will. I've been doing this for a long time. And people, they mostly don't change. Even when we really want them to. Are you talking about Tyler? Look, I'm really tired. Can we not do this? Allison, I like you. I really do. I've known you since you were a kid. You're honest, stable. You're not a troublemaker. But Tyler, I mean, if he goes down, don't let him take you with him, okay? I, I can't, I can't do this. Oh, you okay? Please just let me go. I need air. I need some air. I, I did forget that people don't know that she's obviously the one that stabbed Marianne. So I, I, yes. I slipped that detail for the last like 30 minutes. And people think that it was Tyler, obviously, that that stabbed Marianne opposed to her. Ty, are you there? Tyler? Answer me, please. Hello? Fuck. Why is he ghosting me? God. I can't breathe. God, this is stressing please me stop. out. Here before this will pass. Right. To breathe in okay. and out. Follow the circles. <sighs> Just a little longer. Oops, I pressed down, but I don't think it counted. Wait, it's not letting me press anything now. Why? My heart is going to explode. What happens if you get them all wrong? Does she just like go into a full on panic? these people are gonna be like or when I'm gonna see you again we can still undo it we can tell them what really happened no way it's done that's it you're gonna be there to talk on the voice if I need you right of course it'll almost be like we're still together it's time to get going though come on wait chief just a sec Sam hey, uh, kids I am um, went back to the house and Got a few things for you. I, I know how much she's meant to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Oh, kids. I, I don't think it's Sam. Sam's it's like too obvious time, okay? of an answer, I feel like. <laughs> Greg's weirded me out a little bit. They emphasize the hand touch, and I don't know why they emphasize that. Allison? That was a little weird, but. What are you doing out here? It's freezing. I just needed some air. What happened? What's wrong, little moose? I don't know who I could trust. Oh, gosh. I think I had a panic attack. I'm 
like suspicious of Eddie now too, bro. I don't even know who I could trust. I'm stressed out. It's gonna be okay. She had that weird flashback, and, and like he did lie about her getting about into that art school or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to believe. Nobody is trustworthy anymore. I'm sorry. This morning has just been so... God, I'm embarrassed. Don't be. You haven't had an attack in a while. What's going on? I've just been so wrong. About everything. Did Tyler say something to make you feel that way? No. It wasn't him. It was me. I failed him. Over and I feel like over. it's gonna come out that she's the one that actually stabbed Marianne instead of Tyler. She's just like freaking out. There's, From here, I it feel looks like, like you've been busting your ass to help him. I feel like the truth is gonna come out. You don't understand, Allie. You've got so much weight on your shoulders with Tyler coming back and your big move. You know, maybe it's time to ease off some of this, some of this other stuff that's clearly stressing you out. If you mean Marianne, I can't. I owe it to Tyler to see it through. Do you? I don't know why you've always blamed yourself for that. Well, it wasn't your fault. Well, I mean, it's not true. But I don't think she's gonna say what I think she's gonna say. But I'm still gonna say that because YOLO. That's not true, Uncle. I was there. I. You were 11 years old. There was nothing you could do. You can't go on letting it haunt you every waking moment. Well, that's exactly what I'm actually letting it do. So. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Look, you're not your mother, okay? What do you mean? I mean, something happened to her. Something bad. I don't know what it was, but... I never left her. You can't make that same mistake. You've got to tell those ghosts to move on. You have the option to tell him that you killed Marianne? I feel like we just tell him, like, F it, right? I don't know. I feel like, why not? There's, there's, I don't know. Why not? You know? Just, let's lay everything all out. Let's lay everything all out on the table. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him! I'm going to tell him. Sorry. I'm going to. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. No one's gonna stop me. I'm trying to convince myself to do it. <laughs> I feel like it's a dumb decision, but I want to do it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Uncle. It was me. I is the one who had the scissors. What? This is probably stupid. I'm here for the drama. What are you saying? Oh my gosh. I think she needs this out of, I think, I think, I think she needs this off her chest anyways, in order to like move she, on. I don't think she's ever gonna she move on. Named Tyler. If she doesn't tell anyone. So I stabbed her. <laughs> I killed her. <laughs> Holy cow. I killed my mother. <laughs> this just got interesting. Whoa. But Tyler confessed. He Oh god, I don't know if this is the right the choice. We... we lied. We lied to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. No, 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 no. Oh gosh, I have anxiety. <laughs> How? How could you let him take the blame? It was a mistake, I know. 
but we were in shock. And 11 years old. Tyler wanted to take the blame, and I let him. <laughs> but we should have told the truth. <laughs> Must have really hurt. Keeping that inside all these years. I pretty much just bottled it up. And now it's all I can think about. <laughs> Everywhere I look, she's there. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> It's not easy to admit something like that. It takes a lot of courage, Allison. Thanks. It just takes me being insane. I, I should have seen it. Aww. Right. Now I really hope he isn't like isn't a bad so guy or something. Because no, that'll really suck. Too. I want him to be a good guy. Crap. I if he's gonna be bad, I'm gonna be so mad if he is. <sighs> Thank you, Uncle. No, this is something that How happened when they now? were 11 years Any old. Better? And it was out of self defense. Relieved, actually. And really tired. Oh, she deserves a nap. I was remembering something earlier. I don't know if it even really happened. The day Tyler left for Fireweed, did Sam come by with some of our stuff? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He did. Hmm. I mean, I feel like we know how close he was to Marianne. I don't know. We'll ask him anyways. How close were he and Marianne? I, I don't know exactly. But he cared about her a lot. Her, her death really shook him up. He was over at our house a lot, fixing things, chasing off animals. I know you didn't turn up anything about who our biological father was. It's not Sam. It's too easy. But it's too easy. Did you ever think it might have been Sam? Oof. Well, your mom and him were close, so that's a possibility, but I never found any proof, no. I should go talk to him. Are you sure that's a good idea? You need to get some rest. I have to do this. And not just for Tyler. For me, too. I feel like the thing that doesn't make sense to me I about you, Sam Uncle. being potentially their dad. I'll call you later. Is that Sam had the keys to the house in the barn for like multiple years while Allison and Tyler were not going to that house. So it wouldn't make sense for Sam to then try and set the barn on fire when like he knows where the box is at. Because he could have just taken it out at any point in time. But they did say it was like newer panels, so maybe it also was Sam. And he just wanted to keep it there and thought that nobody was going to find it. And then he thought, and then he freaked out and thought that we were going to find it. And then so then he changed the panels himself. Oh man, okay. never mind. I just couldn't, I don't know anymore. Can I convinced this. myself it wasn't Sam, and now I convinced myself that I don't know anymore. Because they did, they did emphasize that the panels were like brand new on the, on the floor, the floorboards. I don't know. Good. He's here. Mm. Yeah. Hi, Jared. Hi, Luke. <sighs> and we do know Sam was married, I think, right? So, I mean, honestly, everything is pointing to Sam, but I feel like that's just too easy. Too obvious. And he does work with boats, so we would have access to a boat to drive over to her. Hmm. Family's family. Get it. Fuck it. 
Oh, Allie, I... Hi. Hello. Hi, Sam. <coughs> are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. What are you doing? Ah, my cousin Billy bought an old motorboat, but that fool drowned the engine taking her out. <laughs> yeah, I told him I'd fix it. <clears throat> Can't put any of the chain or the valve covers back on. So, uh, did you need something? I was hoping to, uh, I actually wanted to check out your boat. Is all. Mm. Yeah. It was Laura. All right. Uh, here she is. I haven't seen your boat in the water for a while. Uh, yeah, it was time for annual haul now. Haul out? Oh, yeah. You gotta get her up out of the water so you can fix up the haul. And I've been uh, missing some tools I need, so. What? Bananas are bad luck on boat. No bananas on board? Really? Damn right. Not just superstition. This one time, this greenhorn brought one on board. Well, you wouldn't believe the day we had. And this was the banana's fault. Bananas are bad luck, sure as hell. Every single time I throw a banana off board, the fish start biting. All right. If you say so. So, um... This! How's she doing? Huh? You, uh... You go to her diner sometimes, right? Your friend works there? Oh, you're trying to ask me how your ex-wife is doing. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we ate at the diner the other night. She was there. She had just cut all her hair off. Hmm. That is the boat from the memory. It has to be. I mean, there I probably is a lot of other boats that look like that, but. Sam, why don't you just talk to her yourself? I do. I talk to her. Okay, so lower his ex wife. I ask about Richie and, and Dylan, too. She just doesn't really talk back. Then maybe you should respect that. Right. Hmm. Very suspicious boat. I mean, it is literally like the same boat that was in her memory. Or the same, like, type of boat. It might not be that one. Where's your brother? Um. Back at the house, I guess. <clears throat> so, uh, what's he getting up to today? Who knows? Huh. All right. We're gonna snoop through absolutely like almost everything just oh, because. That's a really nice sextant. Well, it sure is. It's a present like from my old to. crew for my 30th birthday. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, it, it's mostly just for decoration these days, but. Uh, I'm a big fan of doing things the old-fashioned <laughs> Sam's way. yapping hmm? too much for Let's me to see, snoop. Uh, how's the house coming along? Shut up. Honestly, physically painful. It'll be a miracle if I don't throw out my back. Let your brother do the heavy lifting. So he can throw his back out? <laughs> Not better. Hey, an encyclopedia of astronomy. I have this one. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Real detailed. Oh, I know this one. The introduction will be forever burned in my brain. Impressive speed it. collection. Speed run, speed you run. Want some, take them. I don't really navigate anymore. Speed run the snooping. Uh, oh, uh, thanks. Sam, I'm trying to dig up dirt on you, okay? I need, I need to focus. Listen, I think Sam's cool and I think he might be safe, but I'm suspicious of everybody. What is this? <sighs> This article about ocean acidification is really unnerving. What's that? Oh, um, there's an article in today's paper about how climate change is ruining the ocean. Mm. Yeah. Oh, pizza. <sighs> Fish have gotten puny. Spotting fewer and fewer whales. I don't know where we're headed, but we sure as hell are going there. 
Why would I take this? I don't know why, but I am going to take it. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Was it spray paint? Or like nuts. a WD-40? What is that? What's this? Hey, cuz, I left you my bow a month ago, and as far as I can tell, the only work you've done is test how much beer you could fit on it. I paid you in advance as a favor because I know you need it, but God damn it, I need my boat. Family is family, but get it done by this weekend or I'm reporting it stolen, and I know you're tired of brown on your ass. P.S. Answer your goddamn phone. Why is brown on his ass? Also, this is what he was reciting when we walked in because he was saying, family is family. So he was making fun of this letter. So that's that. And then what is this? Um, the bank. <clears throat> oh, he is a, a negative four, four, six. He owes some money. You are hereby summoned to appear and answer of this complaint in the following date and time. State of Alaska versus Sam. What did he do? Oh, DUI. Oh, yeah, we did. We did see that he was a drunk or like kind of an alcoholic. Voting. Okay. Fisherman's Association. Okay. Hi, Tyra. I feel bad for telling Sam to shut up, but I was just trying to... Listen, I'm trying to get down to the bottom of this. Down down in understanding what's going on in this case. Bye, Sam. I'm going upstairs. Beer cans. Paint. Nothing. There's nothing. But that boat right there is definitely interesting that that's here. There you go. Oh, he needs this. Wait, I forgot about that. Oh, uh, thanks, princess, but that ain't it. It's, uh, it's in a red can. Not a princess. <laughs> well, don't oh, do that. Damn it. <sighs> what happened? I busted my finger with that stupid wrench. <sighs> Grab me a gauze. Should be in that cupboard over there. Well, that's vague. Covered over where? Over here? I think I saw stuff in this for first aid kits. No, oh, yes, here we go. In that cupboard, you know, the one? You know the cupboard. You know which cupboard I'm talking about. Yeah, the gauze should be in that uh, the cupboard over there. Yes, I got it. Thank you so much. We go. Hmm. Studying. What? What? Sam, are you our father? Whoa! <sighs> <laughs> Dang! Figured you'd ask me that question someday. She just came right out and said it. Well? I wish I was. What the hell kind of answer is that? I'm sorry, Ellie. I figured it wasn't him. It was but too obvious. The man you're obvious. looking for, he ain't me. Unless it is still Sam. He's just saying, like, I am not your dad. Oh, okay. Guess I'll just take your word for it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you got no right coming in here, getting angry at me for something I got nothing to do with. Hey, you could just be lying. Well, let's not, like, accuse him. You two are so close. I know you meant something. I have to be zen during these conversations, remember? Calm. You honestly think I would have let you two grow up without a father? I may be a deadbeat, but I'm no coward. But you must know something. I truly don't. Your mama, she never. Look, we were just friends. I mean, take a look at old Sam. No woman like Marianne would ever think twice about a guy like me. I'm so sick of this. I'm so tired of trying to unravel all of Marianne's fucking secrets. 
I don't... I don't understand her. I want to hate her so much. But I don't even know who she was. Come with me. I want to show you something. the last time you cracked a window? He told the Brits. Ugh. Come over here. Let's get some fresh air. Perhaps. Much better. Hold on. I'll be there in a second after I'm done, done, done snooping. Looking sharp, first mate, Kansky. Um... Uh, What's that now? These yeah, they... pictures. Oh, well, yeah, that... Uh, Sorry. What do you do on board? Oh, I work the deck. Started out doing maintenance. Collecting the garbage, cleaning the hull. Ranked up to navigation after a while. Right. Hence the sextant. What's this over here? I'm gonna go on your laptop, Sam. Thank you so much. If it gets the house sold, it gets the house sold. Hero Boat Captain saves crew members. Samuel Kansky, the 29-year-old captain of the Anna Anachak Rose, didn't think twice before jumping into the ice-cold, choppy waters of Mitchell Point to save members of his crew after their vessel capsized off the coast of Juneau, Alaska. Love this picture, your mama. Okay. Dad, I talked to mom and she. Oh, Dad, I talked to mom and she said you were having some trouble. It's not much, but hopefully it's enough to put some food on the fridge. Call me, Richard. Aww. Check for one fifty. What else can I go through? Why is there a burnt-up pan in your garbage? Oh yeah, <laughs> that. Uh. Might have fallen asleep cooking dinner. That is very Glad dangerous. you're still with us. What's all this? Here, I uh, kept a few things. <laughs> this is cute. Little mementos. Swords and schemes. Oh, and I took her to see that for her birthday. <laughs> she hated every second of it. Whole drive back, she talked about how it butchered the books. I remember this. We got this on our trip to Juno. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like it's pretty obvious that Sam was, like, in love with she her. She saved up for a whole year to make that happen. There's no way he wasn't. Dear Sam, I'm writing from the little hotel you recommended in downtown Juno, and you were right. The kids love the whale mural. Our other favorite was the raven mural at City Hall. Today, we took the tramway to the top of Mount Roberts. Kids wanted to hike the trail. But we only made it to the totems. Tomorrow, we're going to hike to Nugget Falls to see if the glacier, see if the glacier still looks like what's on the other side. Hope you're hauling them in the, oh, hope you're hauling them in by the barrel load. Mary Ann. Okay. Then we got a birthday card. Dear Sam, most bears only live to 20 or 25, so congratulations on making it to 29. I certainly wouldn't have survived long out here without you, so thanks again for everything you do. Laura is a very lucky woman. I know you think the best part of your past has been erased, but as long as you don't forget uh, the, Anna, the Anna, 
check rose the whatever boat he was on earlier that we read will always be seaworthy it just might look a little smaller in memory i hope you get some time on the water with richie this weekend and catch everything you deserve including some new memories happy birthday my cherished friend this is so sweet mother made that oh she was a real artist that one kind of like you <laughs> Look at these ones. She looks happy. Mm. She was. When was this? Why are you wearing a square hat? Oh, yeah, that was when I finally got my captain's license. Mary Ann's the one who pushed me to get it. Made me wear that stupid hat when I went to take the oath. Huh. Yeah, Laura took this one. We'd been working on that barn for months. That roof was a son of a bitch to sheath. Rain just kept on leaking into the loft. Wait, the barn has a loft? Oh, yeah. You didn't know? No, she didn't tell us. I forgot us. he built that barn. Is that a trap door? Yeah. Jim, you closed the whole thing up. Told her it was going to be real hard to get any hay up there, but... She said she didn't mind. Do you know what's up there? I could tell she didn't want to talk about it, so I respected that. So now we're gonna, we well, have to. We're gonna have to empty it out for the sale, so I guess we'll know soon enough. Hey, stop picking up beers. Well, are you really gonna go through with this? It's like I told you, that, that house meant everything to your mama. It's, it's all that- This guy concerns me. We got left. Stop drinking, please. You can't just throw it away. I think I think we don't need to be aggressive with him right now, especially while he's drinking. So as much as I do agree that he has to let Marianne go, I don't think yelling at somebody who is an alcoholic and currently drinking alcohol is probably the smartest. And he's also like emotional. So I'm just gonna say I'm sorry. He's hurting, which is valid, but he does need to let it go eventually. I'm sorry. I know how hard this has been on you. But you need to move on. What's done is done. Maybe it would help to talk to someone about it. I never tell you about the time I broke my leg. Shin bone snapped in three different places. Stuck in my ass for a month. No use to anybody. I was so down, I couldn't even bring myself to get out of bed. But your mama, she doesn't have none of that. She got me up one morning and drove me to a nice spot by the harbor. We watched the boats come in and out all morning. You can't let yourself be defined by the parts that are broken. That's what you told me. You gotta find a way to work with what you got. I think... I think about that... a lot. <laughs> gotta... Remember. Is he falling asleep? <laughs> or is he just crying? He fell asleep. Good night. Poor Sam. I do feel really bad for Sam. I do don't I, I, I do believe that he's not my dad. But hypothetically if Sam did buy that or build that and then and then that box was underneath, like he would know about it because he's the one that built the barn. But I don't think that's, I, I, I do, I do believe that it wasn't him that tried setting the barn on fire. 
I'm still leaning towards that other guy, whatever his name is. Has he been trying to, like, remember the memory by himself? Hey, Tyler. I've been looking all over the place for you. Hi. You all right? Nope. Yeah, Thanks. I'm fine. Whoa, whoa. Hey, let's get you off your Michael's feet, okay? just taking care of both of us today, huh? Listen, if you want to be alone, I'll it's go. It's so pretty. But if there's anything you need to get off your chest, I won't snitch. I trust Michael. Michael's the only person I you trust fully. How is she? Yeah. I, I went back to check on her this morning. She was in a pretty bad way. Whatever went on between you two, it, it wrecked her. Look, I don't want to drag you into this. Well, I'm already in it, and you look like hell. Thanks. So I just got a lot on my mind. Well, I know one thing that's good for that. As a wise man once said, fishing is the cure to the wounds of the heart. Was that wise man you? Hey, like I said, I gotta write my own legacy. The graphics are so pretty! So, you in? I'm in! Anything with I Michael, I'm in! Come on, we're burning daylight. Let's go. And it's so pretty Where outside. Where are we going to go? Why go anywhere when we have a perfectly frozen lake right here? Ice fishing in November? Yeah. It got cold way fast this year. Climate change. That shit's going to kill us. But hey, fish first. You can walk behind me if you're afraid, though. You're actually serious. I am a very serious man, Tyler. No jokes here. Let's go. We still have to get everything out of the car. <laughs> Hi, Panther. Look at it. We're on our first date. Stage is set. It's showtime. Whenever you're ready. You sure you don't want to go? Nah. Look, no way I'm going to rob you of your first catch in your own backyard. <laughs> All right. That looks peaceful. It looks like a good time, honestly. He's got his little thermos. And it's you beautiful. Got everything you need, by the way? Yeah, I'm good. Man. I'm so gonna miss this. Miss what? Just hanging out and fishing and... You know, I'm not gonna have a lot of time after you move to Juno with school and the JC and everything. Right, right. Tyler's head is in a different place. So did any of the people you came up with at Fireweed land in Juno? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Once they left, I never really kept in touch. Really? People came and went a lot. And besides, everyone moves on eventually, right? <laughs> not everyone. Not people who get so close, they're like family. I already have a family. Well, there's a reason we think of families as trees. They keep on sprouting new branches and... Oh, uh, hey, I think I've got a bite. Oh, nice! You got this. Reel them in. Fish. Alani, you're distracting me. Come on, pull up on the what? rod. Hold to keep the marker in the sweet spot. Okay. Like that? Reel them in. No, give it a nice pull. I'm awesome at fishing. <sighs> Slippery little. Got it. <laughs> Bravo. First of many. Pace yourself. 
It's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> Thanks, Sensei. Oh, hey, did you want to make solid plans to hit the buzzard hole? The river might ice over soon, so we shouldn't wait too long. Sure! Come on! Yeah, sure. Put some pep in Sweet. your step, Tyler! I was planning to go Saturday. I'll pick you up on the way out. Cool. I'll set my alarm to ass crack of dawn. Let's look at everything. So, ice fishing. I mean, yeah. What isn't there to like about standing in the middle of a frozen lake? The fear of falling through I the frozen lake. I should have said this earlier, but thanks for doing all this. You're making it sound like it's a big deal again. This is what friends do. Besides, I wanted to see if all this talk of yours was just I just that. got a friend zone. Your verdict? You're doing pretty well, but don't let it go to your head. Still plenty of time for ego to get the best of you. Yes, sir. Ah! Oh, fish! Right, here we go. Fish! Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> tap, 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 tap. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> How about them apples? Oh, nice. nice job. So, I'm you a weren't all talk. Impressed. Look at. I only see two fish in He's my opening up more. For now. He's getting happier when he catches more fish. You have this whole fancy bag just for ice fishing? You don't mix and match. Ever. Jeez. You don't mess around, do you? <laughs> Told you earlier. I'm a very serious man. So you gonna tell me what's in the cooler, or what? I could tell you. Or I could watch you squirm a bit longer. Tell me. Uh, you're a terrible person. You know that? You betcha. And we have nothing else we haven't looked so, at. So, about last night. I don't know what Allison said, but from my side, well, I thought we were on the same page. But it turns out we weren't. Hey, so don't tell her I told you, but last week your sister was almost unbearable. She was jumping up and down with excitement at you coming back. Aww. Really? <laughs> you better believe it. Look, the last time you saw each other, you were kids. Just because things have changed doesn't mean you can't work it out. I know. It's probably my fault. I really pushed her last night. I just don't get why she always has to run away from everything. Can you blame her? <sighs> Avoiding the problem doesn't make it go away. She's so fixated on selling the house. It's like she's trying to bury the past. All of it. Even the good parts. Look, I'm not picking sides here. Okay, but she's been murder house girl ever since it happened. Now she's got a chance to put it behind her. And start fresh. <laughs> Shit, I'd be pretty eager too. I guess I didn't really think about that. I've been so focused on my own shit. It's been hard, you know? Figuring out how to live out here. It's cool seeing like both Allison and Tyler's perspectives. Yeah. When I first got there, all I could think about was getting out. It felt like a cage. But after a while, it started to feel more like a shell. I figured out who I was in there. But now I've got to work out how to be that person out here. Well, if it makes you feel any better, none of us really know what we're doing. Like, shit may look bleak now, but your sister's never going to give up on you. And you can lean on me, too, if you want. <laughs> Just be careful, okay? Got a bad left shoulder. Your right <laughs> shoulder only. I'll keep it in mind. Thanks for listening. Don't mention it. Fish! Don't you say anything. I, <laughs> I was ready. I was looking at that the whole time we were talking. We are focused. Tap, 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 tap. Mm, easy. Oh. Whoa. Bam. Three out of three. Three well out of three. <laughs> I got nothing. That was clean. Are we getting closer? <laughs> Our knees. I'm a little disappointed. 
Were they that close before? I feel like we're getting like closer and closer Can I ask every you time. Kind of weird and maybe hard. Our to knees answer. are touching. Weird and kind of hard to answer. Are my tell. jam. What's up? How'd you know you were ready to uh, trust anyone enough to put yourself out there? Okay. Yeah, that that is a hard question. At the pretty mountains. <laughs> Told you. There's not really two ways about it. You gotta be willing to take a hit. Look, I stopped listening to the entire indie folk genre just because I was dumped at a show once. But I put myself back out there just like everyone who's ever gotten their heart stomped on. Because when you meet someone who really sees you, you don't have to pretend anymore. This is romance and music. Hold on. Let me put my, let me get my flirting face on. What did he say? <laughs> Why are you arguing with that? Oh, you still want to risk it with me? I feel like that's a, a silly little answer, perhaps. And you're still interested in being that someone? Even after all the shit that's happened? Oh. Hey, I've got baggage too. I think it's worth a chance. Don't you? <gasps> Total agreement! Me and you. I think we're in total agreement here. Yeah? Yeah. I get this feeling like I could say or do anything with you, and it'd be cool. I feel safe. Aww. You are. I like Because Michael. your sister would kill me if I did you dirty. We're zooming in. Uh, yeah, she would. So, doesn't look like you're catching anything with that. Uh, you want me to show you how it's done? I caught Go three fish with that. Thank you very much. Three for three, by the way. Oh, this is so peaceful. Very, very, like, it's less hey, stressful than you're missing when you're we playing as Allison. Oh, they're gonna kiss. Look at, we're staring at his face. See, he keeps looking over. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god, we're gonna kiss. Look at he's staring into my soul. I'm gonna make him we make a move here for sure. Oh, oh god, I coughed up my I choked up my spit. Yay! Yay, we like Michael! Yay! And it's so pretty. What a, what a perfect first kiss. Yay. We got a nice view, good company. We got three fish. Oh, I forget Allison, let's get stressed out again. They gave me a break, they gave me a break. All right, now back to reality. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Hey, Ali. I think I'll just show myself out. Okay, uh, call me later. You know I will. Yay! Okay. Time to fix this, fix, uh, this relationship. Sorry for interrupting. No, that's okay. No, it's totally fine. We were done anyway. Oh, I forgot about the the barn. Catch anything? Barn has an addict. Attic. Mostly ice, but yeah. Tyler, I'm sorry for freaking out yesterday. All of this, it's just been really hard on me. Don't apologize. I was being an asshole. We should have never pushed you that hard. Come here. Yay, friends again. God, why did I miss you so much? It's only been a day. I've been told I have that effect on people. You dumb dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I need to show you something. What? You gotta go to the barn, right? It's gotta be the Can barn. Can we sit down for a sec?
What? So, what is it? I was just at Sam's. He's not our father. How do you know? That's what he I said. Asked him, point blank. I believe him too, and I don't think Arson's his style. I feel like if that was the case, he could have dealt with it differently. I'm not surprised. Burning down the barn didn't really seem like a Sam move. Yeah, I guess it was silly to suspect him in the first place. He'd never hurt Mary Ann's kids. There's something else. Look at this. The this attic. was taken in 1992 when Mary Ann first moved to Delos Crossing. See that ladder? Sam told me the barn has a loft. He helped her build it. Apparently, she never told anyone about it. And it's still there? As far as he knows, yeah. What do you think? I think we go Should up we there and explore. We've come yes. this far. And a hidden loft? That's got secret shit written all over it. Let's go. <laughs> Hi, Van. Welcome in. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome in, you guys. I hope you had a good stream. How are you guys doing today? It's good. We're on the last chapter of the story game. Ugh, what a mess. That's not going to help us get this house sold. Yeah, How did we not we see that before? Be dead to think for that. So obviously the ladder's gone, but what about that handle? Is it still here somewhere? What do you think is up there? I don't know. I'm trying not to speculate. My brain was going to some real dark places. Probably just storage. We don't have to do this. I'll protect you. Don't worry. Whatever's up there, I'll protect you. We'll see how chivalrous you feel when you've got bats in that perfectly coiffed hair. Okay, fair enough. So what are we looking for? We're looking for... No lever. Man, lever. I thought I saw something right over here, but I guess my mind's just playing tricks on me. I mean, there's nothing back here, that's just an outlet. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. The handle should be behind this. Ah, uh, there it is. Easy peasy. It's opening up. The secret keeper always did store all the best secrets in the clouds. Yep. Come on. I'm Let's assuming this is the there. room that we saw at the ending of the last episode, the little preview that we got. Well, that's way too high to jump. You want to give me a leg up? I'm so not touching your nasty <laughs> shoes. We'll find a ladder. Well, there's a ladder. Boop. <sighs> All right. Yep. There's puzzles in this. I can tell. That box is going to be a puzzle. I mean, it's just like front and center. Got to get our thinking cap on. Can you see on. anything? It's a nope. cool room. Not I'll, a I'll give her that. Rings all like glow in the dark. It's pretty cool. Here, found a switch. <gasps> what the? Huh? Holy shit. Well, that shaved a few years off my life. Mad Hunter. Yeah, that's the music. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Whoa. Ooh, I love a good puzzle. I'm ready. It's her story. Look, she left us something. I knew it. I knew it. That was the last. That, the last puzzle box. It's got a combination lock with letters. This is really interesting. Do you think she hid the code somewhere in all this? Knowing Mary Ann, probably. <laughs> well, you want to do this? Yeah. 
Let's start here. Oh no, one of it takes me forever. <laughs> Recognize this? Yeah. It's from the story where the goblins tricked the Mad Hunter. It looks like it, but it's different, right? Can you check the book? Where the goblins trick the Mad Hunter? Well, here it is. Why do you think she changed the picture? I don't know. Maybe so that's it's a the message, original photo. The differences between the two mean something. Hmm. Something about Marianne, right? All right, get ready, because it's story time. All right, uh, once upon a time, in a castle just beyond the ancient and deep forest, the Mad Hunter was punished by the Gold Lady for failing to return with the wise princess. For your failure, said the Gold Lady, I will take your left hand. You will return to the ancient and deep forest and hunt the wise princess. And if you can bring her back, I will return your hand to you. Fail again, and I will take your right hand. The Mad Hunter could hunt with just his right hand, but if he lost both his hands, he would never be able to hunt again and would no longer be a Mad Hunter, but only a madman. So the Mad Hunter returned to the ancient and deep forest, searching with his piercing eye for the wise princess. The crafty goblins were out searching for mischief when they saw the Mad Hunter on the prowl. We cannot let him find the princess, said the goblins, and so they devised a plan. It was wash day and the princess had hung her beautiful gown out to dry. They stole it from the line and stuffed it full of straw and then returned to where the Mad Hunter was sc scouring the paths of the forest. As Mad Hunter turned down a path that would have led him to the big wooden house, the goblins danced the straw, princess in and out of view in the opposite direction. The ruse worked. The hunter fixed his piercing eye on them and followed. Through the day and into the night, they led him away from the true princess. As night fell, the crafty goblins realized the error in their plan. The Mad Hunter was now hunting them. If he caught them, he would not be kind. So they put their heads together to come up with a plan. It did not take them long to realize where they should go. They led the man, Mad Hunter to the edge of the deep and icy lake. And when he came into view, they weighed the fake princess down with stones and dropped her into the frigid water, careful not to plunge into the depths themselves, lest the moon hag take her revenge on them. The Mad Hunter removed his clothing and dove in after the fake princess. He followed the shape of the sinking princess deep into the chilly water down below where ice covered the lake's surface. Finally, he caught her, but when he spun her toward him, he realized she had no head and that her body was stuffed with straw. And then he slipped. Oh, oh, and then he felt a slippery fin brush his shoulder as the moon hag loomed overhead. The next morning, the princess went to retrieve her gown from the clothing line and found that it was gone. She immediately suspected the goblins of mischief and called goblins. Did you take my gown? The goblins emerged from their cave and nodded sadly. Now what will I wear? Asked the princess, sad and angry that she had lost her only dress. Let us explain, said the goblins. So they told the princess the story of the mad hunter, and then they produced his clothing, which is a bit large for the princess, but much warmer than her beautiful gown. She immediately forgave them. Thank you, my friend, she said, for rescuing me and for this clothing, which will keep me much warmer in the winter than my beautiful gown. The Mad Hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the Moon Hag, but she did not kill him because even reduced to just one hand, he was too useful a servant. Lo, he plotted the day he would emerge to once again hunt the Wise Princess and earn back his left hand. And that is the story of how the Crafty Goblins rescued the Wise Princess from the Mad Hunter. So this is interesting because it's like... The Mad Hunter, I think, is in reference to their dad. And the Crafty Goblins are obviously me and the princess is obviously her mom so is this like a metaphor perhaps okay so that's the photo okay. we're looking at spot the differences so the difference is r we have hands down here the, so the hands are different actually because she took his left hand and then this it's actually the right hand that we see it moves oh some of these parts are buttons. So that is different. Um, this tree huh. is different. Nope. No goblins. Yeah. In the original, the goblins managed to save the princess from the mad hunter. So we saved Marianne from something. Yes. But not in this version? 
The princess is running away from the yes. mad hunter. Who was sent by the gold lady, according to the story. Do you think the gold lady could have been Marianne's mom? I mean, she always used to say she moved to the end of the world to get away from her family. Huh. Why is that hand down there? Does that yeah, really matter? Right. I think it does. She ran away. Just like the princess is here. That is the same. That's pretty much the same. That's the same. That's the same. There's no castle. Why do you think she added that castle in the background? See the color of... Yeah, it's blue. The flag? It could be her mother's castle. It looks like the princess is running away from it. So, Marianne ran away from home. And she grew up kind of rich? This is the hand, a blue, red, red, I got her, unless like that's the tree back there, there's no castle, got stars right there, this looks like pretty much done. <sighs> It's not the same title, so I guess that counts as a difference. That's it. Nice. Whoa. What's in there? Uh, pictures, letters. It's a bunch of stuff. Have you ever seen any of these? All the pictures of Marianne I've ever seen were the ones hanging on the walls. The gold lady. That was definitely her mom. So, did Marianne grow up kind of rich? Maybe. Would have been nice. An Oops, artsy so environmentalist. Yep, that sounds like Marianne's exact kind So who's kind that of that's like, has hard eyes everywhere? Did you know she studied engineering? No, but it looks like she changed her major to visual, visual arts. Visual art? I don't think she actually got it changed. The paper's not signed and it's all wrinkled. Like someone tried to throw it away. Mary Ann. I can't, who's Brent? Sorry, I, read, I, I, I uh, looked at the very end. Uh, Mary Ann, I can't do this anymore. You deserve better than cliche bullshit like it's not you, it's me. But the truth is, it's all just been too much to deal with and I've realized I'm just not ready. Maybe if we could have dealt with all of this on our own without your mom constantly putting pressure on us, things could have been different. But the damage is done and it's probably too late for that now. I'm so sorry, you're an amazing person and you made me a better man man i almost said mom and he made me a better man i hate myself for doing this but i feel like we'll both be better off apart there i go with the cliches again please don't ever stop being who you are here but i'm gone brent okay so who's brent i'm assuming brent's that guy this in that guy photo any more cryptic wow i don't think i've ever seen a picture of her that young i think that's her mom in the background Oh, poor thing. Why would she keep an old drawing of a pet in here? I can't believe she was a ballet dancer. Mary Ann. And a good one, too. God, that's so not her. It was probably like her mom forced her to do ballet, and then her mom forced her to probably stay in engineering, and then her mom forced her and bred apart. That's what it feels like. Tyler. See that little light? I think we need to solve this one next. Okay. Hey. There's the gold lady again. She's all over the board. There was a figure of her in that stash by the Mad Hunter painting, right? Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah, that's true. Maybe all of this is related to what we found in there. Oh, gosh. Okay, so not the book. Okay, her cruel parents kept her locked away in their musty palace. Hey, I can move the piece next to the gold lady. All these pictures. They look like images from Marianne's life before Delos, don't they? Well, some of them do anyway. Maybe that's it then. We need to figure out which ones are real. 
Well, I think it's the bird because she didn't want the princess dancing, her to have playing the violin, bird. spinning wool. I guess this is stuff she did for fun. Notice how unhappy she looks in all these pictures. I don't think she was having any fun. Um, I don't really know what this is. This one's an artist guy. I don't know what. Hold on. Environmental over economy. Well, he's like a painter. You think the guy with her is bread from the he letter? He has paint. I would guess so. He has paint on his shirt, so he has to be a painter. Huh. What's the gold lady doing? Whispering something into someone's ear behind the princess's back? And then money, the right? The princess looks like she's trying to run away. And she's being watched by the gold lady. I, I'm not super confident in this. How do I... Is this not it? Figured anything out yet? How do I lock it in? I don't think this is it. Nah, still thinking. Um, so we got the ballet, the bird. We got... I'm pretty sure it's him being an art artist. So I guess she tried to change majors, but couldn't. Her parents probably wanted her to study something more. That's the princess and the gold lady. See how closely she's watching Marianne? Classic stage mom. That's her watching Marianne. She didn't let her have a bird. Money balance. I don't know what this even means. What that even is. I can't tell. Is that it? It's opening. I don't know what that last one is. I figured that was the only one I didn't have right, but I still don't know what that is. What's in there this time? All right, let's go photo photos first and then the letter. Is that Carol? Yeah, and Sam. Look at him. He's so young and happy. Salmonberry Park. Huh. Is that some kind of commune? Looks like it. Don't be so a stranger. weird to imagine her living in a community like that with, you know, other people. The weirdest part is how they all seem to love her. Where was Dang. Bob and Marianne when the whole town was turning on us? Wow. She worked for a watchmaker in Juno before she moved to Delos. No wonder she was so handy. Here's my Delos Crossing pal's number. I let him know you were interested in the house he's selling. Oh, oh. so that's how she found Tammy. the house. Then we got this long letter from dad. Sorry, spoiler, I'm reading ahead. <laughs> All right, this is in 1996. Mary Ann, I hope this letter finds you well, but since you didn't leave any contact information, I will have to send it to your aunt and hope for the best. I am writing to inform you that your, oh, <laughs> that your mother passed away last week. We just had her funeral reception. The house has been filled with people all day, friends, family, colleagues, and church members. It's now 11 p.m. and I'm sitting alone at the kitchen table surrounded by dozens of trays of food, flowers, and sympathy cards. Your cousin, Aidy, brought in a beautiful photo album full of our holiday photos in La Connor. You're in all of them, but you weren't here today. We haven't heard from you in four years and can only hope you made it to Alaska or wherever you are and that you and your child are both safe. Your mother had been sick and depressed for years and you can imagine why. The pain of seeing... Oh, the pain of being shunned by her own daughter, knowing she would never get to see her grandchild grow up, it spread through her body like cancer and consumed her completely. All this suffering is simply because you ran away like a temper temperamental little girl instead of accepting her help when you got pregnant out of wedlock after dropping out of college. I figured that's why she didn't ever go into the art. Anyways, after dropping out of college and without a penny to your name, 
She only stepped up to help you because she knew you weren't ready to raise a child properly, Marianne. A mother's duties don't end when her child... Oh. A mother's duty doesn't end when her children leave home. Now that you're a mother yourself, I hope you will begin to understand that good parenting isn't about coddling children. It's about providing for them and shaping them into people they're supposed to become, whether they like it or not. I won't trouble you again. You've made your intentions clear. I just thought you should know. Dad. Whew. Okay, so they didn't talk for four years. What the hell? Marianne was pregnant in 1992 before she even got here. Before us. Oh, why? I didn't realize that part. Do we have a long lost sibling out there somewhere? Uh, why I missed that? Could. She could have given it up or miscarried. Who knows? Yeah. I missed that really. minor detail. Minor detail. Do you think we could track down her father? You mean the grandfather she never told us about? This is a mess. I don't think I want to. You're not at all excited about having more family. You saw the letter. I don't think we want any part of that. Fine. Let's keep digging. I did notice that they said child instead of children. But I was thinking like maybe... Um, I was thinking maybe they just... They didn't know that Marianne was going to have twins. Because they weren't like on talking terms. This just lit up, so I think we're supposed to try this one next. What's this? Hmm. Some sort of map? One day, she took her tiara and ran to the forest. What the hell am I looking at? Some sort of clock? Okay. It starts here That's at the, the castle. Gold lady's castle. Yeah. Some sort of clock? What's that plant thing on top? Oh, those are definitely salmonberry flowers. Oh, wait. Hey, that degree in outdoor studies is paying off. Some sort of clock. Oh, she, we know she went to the salmonberry. Um, yeah, salmonberry park. Is there a date on that? Salmon June. Park. Huh. Is that some kind of commune? Looks like it. It's so weird to imagine her living in a community like that. With, you know, other people. Both of her parents kind of sound like jerks. I would have run away too. And that's 1996. Wow. She worked for a watchmaker in Juno before she moved to Delos. No wonder she was so handy. 1992. That's the clock. Okay. So the clock's Is that basically Carol? last. Yeah. And Sam. Look at him. He's my so brain. Young. Hold on. Happy. Let's figure this out. I think she goes here. And then she leaves. What's that plant thing on top? Oh, those are definitely salmonberry flowers. Hey. That degree in outdoor studies is paying off. And this? Some sort of clock. And then this. this is the princess's house. This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old beaver. First yes. try! Yay! What's in there? Another letter? The princess's loss. Is this from the Book of Goblins? Not that I know of. Well, sure looks like it could be. Kage. All right, the, everyone, story time again. It's only two pages. It's really short. Um, the princess is lost. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. She had made it through the woods and to that house with nothing left but the clothes on her back and a single item from her old life, a splendid tiara. She lost almost everything in her desperate flight from the mad hunter. The trees tore the rucksack from her back and shredded her dress and left a pattern of red welts on her skin but through it all she clutched the tiara close to her chest fearing any mess misstep could cause it to fall and break in her arms the tiara had its own spot in the big wooden house a pillow near the window where the sun would catch on its surface to shine and wink the princess could stare for hours at the tiara marveling in its beauty and running her thumb down its curves 
Every morning she would wake and she would tend to it, polishing its every surface to be sure it shone as brightly as it possibly could. Then she would pluck it up, place it upon her head, and walk the woods, feeling somehow more complete. Because what, after all, was a princess without a crown? Every night she would place it upon its pillow, give it a quick kiss, and go to bed. On her way, she would pause and glance back to make sure it was still there. She hated to be separated from it, but she knew it was safest on the pillow while she slept. Is this like about her kids? Oh, here's another page. One night, the princess woke to a raging storm. The wind howled against the walls, rattling the windows in their panes. Fearing a gust might burst open a window and blow the tiara to the ground, she plucked it from the pillow and brought it to bed with her. All through the night, she held the tiara close, and in the morning, she woke to find herself still cradling it. The storm had passed, and the princess relaxed. That day was the same as any other, though she perhaps gave the tiara an even more thorough cleaning, grateful as she was that nothing had had uh that nothing had gone wrong that night she placed the tiara upon its pillow gave it a quick kiss and went to bed pausing on her way to be sure it was still there in the morning she woke and sensed immediately that something was wrong in the living room the tiara lay upon the ground broken dull and faded nothing else in the room had changed the pillow was exactly where she had left it the window was closed there had been no storm no wind no sign that anything at all could have gone amiss only the broken tiara mute upon the ground. She picked it up and held it in her arms with a guttural, guttural cry. But though she tried to fix it and polish it, it was gone beyond repair and with no shine left. The princess held the tiara through the day and through the next night, sitting in the same spot at the window where she used to polish it. When the sun rose, she looked outside and her gaze fixed on a sapling. She remembered how the sapling had survived the winter, clinging to life despite the frozen, unforgiving earth. Without a word, she went out and buried the tiara in the ground beneath the sapling, and as the final scoop of dirt fell, the tiara felt truly gone, and with it the final link to her old self. She could only go forward and find a new place for herself in this world, where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a wan woman, alone in a deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure and her title. That's sad. I feel like this is just like her losing herself. It's, just, it's talking about, right? And that right? was how the princess lost her most precious treasure and her title. That was the story she read us that night. Oh, that they didn't like. It makes sense now. Yeah. She got pregnant. And she ran away to start a new life. And then she made her way to Delos Crossing, where she was finally happy. But then the baby died. Oh, the tiara's her baby. <laughs> Oh! I can't even imagine how she must have felt. She I can figure out the puzzles, but I can't figure out these poems. Built a whole new life for him. And then... He was just gone. Damn! Okay, I, uh, cause I did think it was her kids at first, and then I was like, it doesn't feel like having it. having us helps her move Oh my on. gosh. But when it looked like we were going to be taken away, she snapped. Oh, I get it, I get it. She just couldn't lose any more children. It really wasn't anything we did. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all this. I don't either, but... All I wanted was to understand what happened to her. And now I do. Yeah. But we still haven't seen what's in that chest. Yeah. Okay, so how do we open it? Well, I noticed these letters. Yeah, so it's O is yellow, L is red, and what is that? E is orange. O is yellow, L is red. All right, should be easy enough. <laughs> o is yellow, L is red, E is orange. 
Nice. Yes. Well, did it just get darker in here? Oh, no, oh, it was so cool when it was like that. Oh my gosh, it's a letter to us. Ollie, she, uh, she noticed. Dear Allison and Ollie, we write stories to understand and be understood. But what good is a story without a first act? I'm sorry I kept mine from you for so long. All my love, Goblin. Why does she have a photo of that tree locked in here? Well, that's the tree that her son's buried at. The dead, or the dead baby. I don't know if it's a boy or not. Is that? Leo Ronan. Why didn't she tell us about him? Why didn't she tell us any of this? I mean, it's fucking terrible. That's why. Allie, did we do the right thing opening this? Well, I mean, we she did. didn't write a letter to us, it's right? Better we know what happened, even, even if it's hard. And there's one more thing we need to see. Are you sure? Yes. Come on, let's go to the dock. Wait, the blanket! We didn't Sorry examine the blanket! This. A baby blanket? Hey, now that we're done with the important Sorry. stuff, maybe we can take a crack at these. Or I can just the leave. Baby old beaver's repair list. That's the story where the princess's house gets damaged by a storm and the animals help her fix it. Yeah. What did they do to fix it again? Is that not it? I wonder if these are actually like worth doing if it's gonna give us like any more information. Once upon a time and we're gonna speed read this really fast. Once upon a time in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. One night, a particularly violent storm shook the house. It shook the shingles on the roof and the planks of the walls. It even shook the beams on which the house stood, blowing the whole thing near to the ground. The princess hid in the closet, fearing the house would come down on her as she slept. In the morning, the house was still standing, but it was badly damaged. The storm had blown shingles off the roof and planks off the walls and even bent a post upon which the house stood. The first two things she could fix, but the last concerned her. So, the roof, the planks on the walls, and the post. What will I do, despaired the wise princess. For, th for though she knew many things, she didn't know how to fix the big wooden house. Just then, the old bear came by to see if the princess had any trouble in the storm. When he found her nailing planks back into the place, he said, Stop, princess. Let me do that for you. I feel like this is about Sam. I'm happy to do it, said the princess, but if you want to help with the roof, you may. When the pair were done with the roof and the walls, they examined the bent support post. I could throw my body against it, said the old bear. I'm very large. He stretched up on his hind legs, being sure that the princess could appreciate how very large he was. Then charged straight at the post. He threw his body against it with an impressive thud. The impact moved the post, but too far, and it ended up being bent in the other direction. The wise princess decided more precision was needed. She thought then of the very old beaver who kept an excellent crafted dam. Wait, didn't we match Sam? Yeah, to the bear in the beginning of the game, or like last chapter. Perhaps she can help. She went looking for the very old beaver and found the industrious animal hard at work slapping down mud on a part of her dam that had been blown apart in the storm. Most of the structure was unharmed because the beaver was very good at building things. The princess knew she had to come, oh, had come to the right place. Beaver, she said, my house was damaged in the storm. Will you help me fix it? I believe I could do that. Yes, said the very old beaver. And she paused at fixing her own den to follow the princess. The very old beaver examined the big wooden house and nodded. 
It will be an easy fix, she said, and she set about writing the post with loud slaps of her tail. When she was done, the wise princess stroked the beaver's head. Thank you, beaver, she said. The wind blew the shingles off the roof and the planks off the walls and even bent this post. Now, thanks to you, I still have a home. Think nothing of it, said the very old beaver, who returned to work on her own den once again. That winter, the very old beaver grew very ill. She was not able to fix her den nor gather food. When the princess found out, she set about del delivering meals to the beaver. She brought stews of corns and beans and basketfuls of bark and, twig and twigs from the beaver's favorite aspen. One day, the wise princess noticed that the beaver's den had begun to fall apart. She set about fixing it, and though she was not as talented as the very old beaver, the, the fix kept the creature warm and dry. Thank you, said the very old beaver. Of course, said the princess. You helped me when the storm blew my house to the ground. Thanks to you, I still have a home, and I'm happy to do the same. The princess continued to nurse the old beaver until the day she came to the dam, oh, to the dam and the forest was still. No birds sang, no branches rustled, no small things skittered within the underbush. Oh, said the princess, staring sadly at the dam, for she knew the old beaver had passed on. Goodbye, my friend, and that is how the very old beaver saved the big wooden house and how the wise princess repaired her kindness. Now I'm thinking, like, who's the old beaver, though? So we fixed the roof. Uh, she we fixed, fixed the roof post. Shingles. She slapped the post with her tail to write it. And then we fixed the panels. She fixed the planks that all right. Damn. Oh. That must have been rough on it. It, it was yeah. Eddie's mom, right? He doesn't really like to talk about it. I was her. thinking of the only old person that she was close to that died was Eddie's mom. So I'm assuming the old beaver was Eddie's mom? Question mark. Dear Mary Ann, you cover your ears every time I try and have this conversation with you, so I thought I'd have a better chance doing this in a letter. I know you don't like saying goodbyes, so I'll keep my melancholic ramblings short and sweet. I want to thank you with all my heart for taking care of me for these past few months. I can't even imagine how exhausting it must have been for you to look after a sick old lady when you also have two small children at home. I know you want me to keep fighting this disease and hoping for recovery, but it's always been a great strength of mind to know when it's time to let go and that time has come i'd like to ask you for one last favor please take care of eddie after i'm gone my poor boy puts on a brave front ever since his father died but i know he's in pain i would be so much more at peace knowing he still has family maybe he could teach the kids how to fish he loves spending time with them thank you for all the warmth and the peace you brought to my life give the kids a kiss for me will you carol Oh, okay, Carol. How so sweet. Okay, well, I'm, I I want to keep doing these. Deeds. Of course, now that, uh, the goblins had to help out the creatures of the forest to pay off their debt to the pelican. Uh, well, what did they do? Now you that know, I, I know, don't really remember. Now that I know, I uh get something out of it. So it's a pelican. Looking for the pelican. I don't think that's it. The pelican. I don't feel like it's that either. No, oh, it's that, right? Yes. Okay, the pelican forgives the goblins. All right, story time again. Get ready. I think this is the last one. Okay. Once upon a time in a deep and ancient forest. I like that. I don't think I caught this uh, the first time I played this game years ago. I don't think I caught all the resemblances between the, the book characters and like the real characters. So I, I really do like that. I think that's really cool. All right. Once upon a time in a deep and ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins in a cave below a big wooden house. They lived with a wise princess who shared as much food with them as she was able, but it was never quite enough. This left the goblins hungry, very hungry, always hungry. One day, as they were out foraging for food, the pious pelican landed on a rock and dumped a s'mores board from her beak, which the goblins knew was magic and never emptied. There were, isn't, isn't this um, Tess? There were king crabs in red, blue, gold, and scarlet, veiny blue shrimp, pink shelled scallops, oblong 
brown clams, purple spiny urchins, and even one prickly red sea cucumber. The food just kept coming. They watched as the pelican ate one clam and then took a nap. Do you think she would mind if we took just a little? Asked one goblin to the other. Her beak never empties. She won't possibly miss a couple of crabs, said the second, licking her lips. They... <gasps> Is this about when they stole? Because I, I, I do remember that... Um, that Tess said that our mom was making a steal. So I wonder if it's about that. That's interesting. Her beak never empty. She won't possibly miss a couple of crabs, said the second, licking her lips. They uh, were agreed, and so they crept over, flitched some crabs, and ran. The goblins scarfed the crabs, but when they finished, they found out that they were still hungry. So you won't miss a handful of shrimp, said one goblin to the other. The goblins scarfed the shrimp, but when they finished, they found that they were still hungry. Maybe also a few scallops, said one goblin to the other. The goblins scarfed the scallops, but when they were finished, they found out that they were still hungry. So they went back for clams and then urchins, and then finally even the sea cucumber. Finally, when they were not hungry, but there was also nothing left. Just then, the pelican woke up. What happened to my food, she asked. Unable to lie about it, the goblins confessed their crime. The pelican was dismayed, but she was a charitable-hearted bird and she could tell the crafty goblins were growing little creatures. Goblins, said the pious pelican, I will share my food with you, but you must in return follow my example and be as generous with those as I, or with others as I am with you. Take that to heart and I will have considered your debt paid. But we have nothing to give, said the goblins. You have your nimble hands and your crafty brains and your loving hearts, said the pelican. The crafty goblins realized how much they had to give and for the rest of the day they looked for ways to help the other creatures of the forest. They found the stalwart moose struggling with an itchy... Okay, so the moose struggling with an itchy, hard-to-reach spot on his back, and so they climbed up and gave it a good scra scratching. Okay, and then the bear. Next, they helped the old bear who could not get to the honey out of a narrow beehive. They climbed up to the top of the tree with the hive, and they, they dropped it, cracking it open. Finally, they found the princess crying over a loss that she would not speak about. Dang. Uh, so they wrapped their little arms around her in a great big hug and stayed until she felt better. When they were done, they returned to the pious pelican. Did it feel good being as generous as I am? Asked the pelican. It did, said the goblins. I'm glad, said the pelican. We all have problems that we can't solve on our own, but if everyone goes about with generosity in their hearts, then there is always someone on hand to help. But we all must commit to do so, or there may be no one to help when you need it. This made sense to the goblins, and they thanked the pious pelican for her food and the lesson. Of course, by this time, they were hungry again, and that remained an ongoing problem until the day the stalwart moose taught them to fish, but that is another story. So the moose has to be... It could be... Um, Eddie? Anyways. And that is how the pious pelican forgave the crafty goblins and how she taught them charity. Okay, so it's the moose, the bear, and the princess. Moose. They gave the stalwart moose a good scratch on the back. The bear. They broke open the beehive for the bear. And the princess gets it a little hug. They hugged the princess when she was crying. Nailed it. Our lives would have been so different if their friendship hadn't gone to shit. I told you it was Tess. All right. The Pelican Crossing is a specialty gift boutique located near the Oshier Glacier, uh, catering to, I don't know how to say that word, Channel Taurus, as well as Dallas Crossing locals. We specialize in an assortment of high quality products from home accessories, handmade souvenirs to personalized apparel and locally made art. The Pelican Crossing will be the first store to act as a relay between the buzzing arts and craft scene of, of customers. In addition to a wide array of novelty handcrafted products, the consumer will enjoy friendly and knowledgeable customer service from Becky store co-owner Tessa and upcoming artist, oh, Mary Ann. This, this business plan is prepared to obtain financing in the amount of 20 grand to purchase inventory and to help cover expenses in the first year of operations. In year one, the Pelican Crossing plans to break even and in year two, we plan to uh, generate a moderate profit. Working on the exclusive summary part of a business plan. What do you think? Oh, of our business plan. What do you think? Ah, business partners. Whoa, there's more? The old bear's gifts for the princess. I'm totally blanking on that story. What did he give her again? Why don't we open up the book and check? 
the bear and the princess. Oh, wow. First try. <laughs> Once upon a time in the ancient and deep forest, the old bear stood on the bank of the river, swiping at salmon on their way to the spawning grounds. Just as he got his paw on a particularly fat one, he heard a woman shouting for help. He considered simply eating his salmon, but then she screamed again and he, and he lumbered over to investigate. After a short walk, he found the princess clinging to the top of a tree while a wolf snarled and snapped at the base of the tree. Old Bear would normally not get in the middle of such a situation. After all, as a fair fellow predator, he understood the wolf's need to hunt. But when he saw the princess, he was struck by her beauty and he knew he had to help. This is Sam, as we know. Um, with a great roar, the bear heaved onto his hind legs, rising to his full height. The wolf snapped and snarled in his direction, but the bear roared again, and the wolf took off into the tree's tail between his legs. The old bear fell back down onto all fours and stared up at the princess. She regarded him fearfully. You can come down, he said. How do I know you didn't save me just so you could eat me yourself? Asked the princess. I suppose this is a fair question, admitted the old bear, but I promise you I won't eat you. The princess had no reason to trust the old bear except that he had kind eyes, and so she slowly made her way down the tree. When she reached the ground, the bear only watched her, and so she supposed she was not going to be eaten today. Thank you, said... Oh, she told the old bear. Of course, he said. Can I walk you back to your house? Of course, said the princess. And so the princess and the old bear walked together through the forest, back through the big wooden house. It is so cool, like, thinking, like, this is, like, her and, and, and Sam's relationship, basically. After that day, the princess would occasionally find gifts from, her, from the bear... A fresh caught salmon, a handful of ripe berries, a newly bloomed bluebell. One spring, when a sudden thaw flooded the path out of the princess's home, the old bear was there and she rode his back across the river. The old bear began to think that the prince. So, okay, that's like, but that's his boat, obviously. I'm still thinking of like who it was in the last, whatever. The old bear began to think that the princess should be his mate. After all, she had no mate and she needed one. And he could keep her warm and provide her a much more suitable den and catch fish for her and protect her from the wolves. She, in turn, would brush out his fur and pick berries without smushing half of them and scratch at one part of his back that he couldn't reach. And with how she took care of the goblins, she would be an excellent mother for his cubs. One day, one day, the old bear came with a ring of spruce. Oh, what the? Did he propose to her? One day, the old bear came with a ring of spruce and asked the princess to be his bride. I'm sorry, said the princess. You are a very good friend, and I appreciate all that you've done for me, but I cannot marry you. You're a bear. I'm a princess. It would never work. The old bear was crushed. Can we still be friends, he asked. We will always be friends, said the princess, but I will never marry you. What? Is that, like, real, or is that just in, like, the story? Maybe he just asked, like, to be his girlfriend? I don't know. The old bear and the princess carried on their friendship and after one what if there's a ring? Sorry, I'm getting way ahead of myself. The old bear and the princess carried on their friendship and after one year he tried again to ask her to be his bride, but once again she refused him. This happened one year later and one year after that and then finally the princess said, "Old bear, you are my dear friend and I appreciate that all that you have done for me, but I would sooner you have left me to the wolves than marry you and that is how it will always be. I have my hands full with the two goblins who live under my house." And they are all I need. That wounded the old bear deeply, but it was finally enough to stop his proposals. They remained friends, and he continued to give her gifts of fresh salmon and ripe berries and newly bloomed bluebells. But the old bear never would again ask the princess to be his bride, much as he might have wanted to. And that is how the princess befriended the old bear and how she refused him. What am I doing here? <laughs> this is crazy. What was the... The old, old gifts? He brought her uh, bluebell berries? Some roses, maybe? Oh, uh, well, I don't know where the what? berries are at. Well, he brought her salmon. Huh. Fresh caught salmon? Berries. A handful of ripe berries? And... Uh, give her fresh salmon, ripe berries, and newly bloomed bluebells. A newly bloomed bluebell? Nice. Oh, it's yeah. a letter from Sam. Yeah, bad. <gasps> Just couldn't let go. Oh my gosh, the tea! Sorry for the note under the door like a prison inmate. You okay? I stopped by and rang a couple of times this week, but you didn't answer. I could see the light in the hayloft, so I figured you were in, but I but didn't want to talk. 
I hope I didn't ruin everything. I know I probably came on kind of strong, but the thing is, I don't know how to talk to a woman like you. You are strong and kind and you know so much. It's hard for me to know how to keep up. I guess all that went on. Oh, I guess all that went to my head, but I want you to know I got the message and I'm going to get out of your hair now and there doesn't need to be any bad feelings. We can pass in the street and say hello or not. It's okay. P.S. I noticed your car was leaking, so I put some sealant in there. You might need to take it to the shop, though. Let me know if you want me to come with you, because sometimes these guys try to rip you off. If not, no big deal. Sam. Wow. So we really did. Oh, my goodness. The crafty goblin's loot. That's, That's from the princess crazy. and the two thieves. I drew the original. And I distinctly remember drawing that cake which is arguably the best part of that illustration. All right, Picasso. And you probably remember what the goblins stole in that story, <sighs> huh? Okay. What did we steal? Here we go. The princess and the two thieves. This is our last, last story, the last puzzle. Once upon a time in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. The house was built from the strong wood of the forest and it kept the princess warm and safe. The princess was not a native of the forest, but she never spoke about where she had come from for it made her cry. She did not have many friends, but that was how she liked it. The forest was a big and deep and many paths led to her house, but not many visitors passed by. The princess was happy to be left alone in the big house in the deep forest. She knew that the forest would provide for her, but that its generosity had to be respected. So she could only took, oh, so she only took what she needed. And for a long time, life was just fine for the princess in the big wooden house. One winter day, when snow blanketed the earth and ice bent the trees low, the wise princess realized that food was disappearing from her house. It was not much at first; only a few fruits and nuts and eggs vanishing during the night. Maybe it's the birds, she said, or the mice. And for a time, the princess was okay with losing some food, for the winter was long and little creatures needed to eat too. But then, small, small items started to disappear as well. Spoons and plates, forks and knives, and blankets. It was as if every time she was in one part of the house, something disappeared in another room. That can't be birds or mice, said the princess. I think I have a thief. So she went outside to look for traces in the snow and noises in the wind, but there was nothing to be found nor to be heard that's strange said the princess maybe the thief is hiding inside my house for many days she hunted looking behind the curtains and under the bed and the attic and the chimney behind the poles and under the carpets but she found nothing and as she searched food kept on disappearing night after night i will make a cake frowned the princess a big cake with every egg and fruit and nut i have so that i only have one thing to keep my eye on she spent the whole day making the cake and using everything she had left the cake she made was so big she could hardly carry it. If I manage to protect the cake, I'll be able to survive the long winter, she said. So she added a lock to the oven and she kept the big cake safe inside. But the next morning, the lock had been opened and the cake had disappeared. At first, the princess cried because that cake was the last of her food until the snow melted. But then she noticed two trails of tiny feet and the spilled flour. And she followed the tracks to a hidden hatch in the floorboards. This is about... This is about um, the this because they the uh, Allison and Tyler um, were under the house and they had that little floorboard that lifted up. They were like in the little. It's not really the basement, but they were like in the underneath the little base of the house. This is how the princess realized that two tiny thieves were living under the wooden house right below her feet. Yep, we knew that. Okay, so they stole. They stole spoons and plates, forks and knives and blankets. Uh. Spoons. What if they took some spoons? And they took plates and forks and knives. Some flour for the cake, maybe? Maybe not. They took spoons and blankets. Hmm. Didn't they take some of the princess's clothes? No. Hmm. Uh... Well, spoons and plates, forks and knives, and blankets. Actually, I'm not sure. And it's still candy. What am I missing here? 
princess realized that food was disappearing from her house. It was not much at first. Only a few fruits and nuts and eggs. Fruits, nuts, and eggs. Fruits. Maybe they took eggs. some of the princess's fruit? I'm pretty sure they stole some eggs. There we go. That's it. I always wondered where that drawing went. Oh. She said it was her favorite, and then one day it just disappeared. You're the best mom in the world. The prettiest princess. Beautiful. And then we're all done. These are all of our carvings. Oh, whoa! Set Gold down. lady stays locked up in her castle. We'll let the mangy muskrat have his rock back. Oh no! I don't. I definitely did not back get all pond, of these. Big frog. There you go, stalwart moose. The ice king goes in the forest, obviously. No! I'm missing too. I think I even have probably less on this side. Yeah, the wise I do. princess goes in the big wooden house, of course. Crafty goblins go here. That's the pious pelican spot. Dang, that's a lot. I thought I was doing pretty good, but we're missing uh, five of them. All right, this was a fun room. I like this room. I, I did a lot of talking, so hopefully I didn't slur too many of my words. You really want to go? You sure we've seen everything? Yeah, we're done. We got everything. Either way, I'm ready for this to be over. Me too. So pretty outside at least. Yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot to absorb. What are we waiting for? I want to know who was here that night. Let's try and remember who Marianne was arguing with. Okay. If you're ready, we'll do it. Where is it? Vecchi is our father? Of course. It had to be him. I didn't even consider Same him. Here, didn't she? Yeah, she, she must have. That's what she didn't want to tell us. God, Marianne and Tom? I know. Ugh. What should we do now? Yeah, call him out here and make him tell us what was going on. And if he That's won't... That's so random. He, he will. Tom? It's Allison. We need to talk. We know it was you. Damn. So, Tom cheated on Tess with Mary Ann. And then Mary Ann and Tess, did they fight? Is that what they fought over then? Or like that whole day? Or was it still not even, did, I mean, Tess has to know. She's cool with that. She's just all, she's just A-OK -okay with that. I like thought about Tom for like a brief second, but I feel like it didn't make sense to me. It still doesn't make sense to me. Let me take the lead on this. I know him better. I thought I did, anyway. Sure. Whatever. As long as we get answers. I mean, we should be kind of scared of him, right? Like... Of course it's someone that's running to be mayor, because why wouldn't it be, right? Kids, listen. You're our father. So he was the one that was trying to burn down the barn. Yes. And then he was also the one that was trying to give, get her mom to get an abortion. How little we had. Why didn't you help Marianne? You mean all the money she wanted? We didn't have anything to spare. 
Well, that winter was rough on everyone. And you would have starved out here if not for all the free food we gave you. Don't act like you had anything to do with that. That was all Tessa. That's a cruel presumption, young man. Maybe it was Tessa's idea initially. But I supported it. And your mother was happy to live off our handouts. Well, I mean, if you're a dad, you kind of should be doing that anyways. You tried to burn down our barn and knocked Tyler unconscious. I never meant to hurt anybody. Well, you were you setting a barn on fire. Doesn't excuse the fact that you didn't even stop to help. What do you want me to say? I panicked. I was terrified that this whole thing was going to blow up in my face. I had to do something. So what do we do now? We tell him he's got to fix the mess he made. One way or another. trying really hard to keep myself from punching him in the face. He's not even the least bit sorry for what he did. He could have seriously hurt you. Yeah, he's just a fucking coward. I think that's like the least of our concerns right now. You failed us, Tom. You need to make it right. I'll do whatever you want. As long as none of this gets out. I don't think Tess knows. Excuse me? Right? You want me to pay for my mistakes? Fine. I mean, like... But, please, yeah, Tessa... Yeah, it wouldn't make sense that Tessa would know. Tessa would kill her. Tessa already knows, Tom. Damn, he slept with his... No. This is messed up on both their parts. That's... That's impossible. It never occurred to you the reason Tessa cut Marianne off was Yeah, because she found out. Okay. Uh, I... But she... She, she slept with his wife's best friend, and she slept with her best friend's you try husband. To your wife. Maybe if you had, we wouldn't be in this situation. And maybe Marianne wouldn't be dead. Oh, come on. You of all people should appreciate how troubled Marianne was. She was unhinged. Something like this would have happened sooner or later. <sighs> And you just couldn't risk being there when it happened. Even though it meant leaving her to raise kids out here all by herself. None of this would have happened if you'd manned the fuck up. I didn't have a choice. Yeah, you always have a choice. What are you talking about? I know it shouldn't have happened. But You're, you take part well, in this too, pal. Your mother was a very... And she'd been so many places and done so many things. The way I always thought I would have. I got caught up. Love made me a fool. Look, I made mistakes. But this will not go any further than the three of us. Why? We know. Tessa knows. Marianne's dead. There's no point in hiding it anymore. He's afraid it'll tank his campaign. Am I oh, wrong? Oh, yeah. Jesus, Tom. This guy's I selfish. I've kept your secret all these years. I don't want to go spilling it. But I will if I have to. What? Oh, this yeah. is because I know he that, that he your saw. Your story about self-defense. I've never told anyone how Mary and me died. Oh, my goodness gracious. That night, I came out here because huh. I was worried about your mother. Jose, thanks for the for the prime. It's his fault. 
He didn't even try to like step in or anything. <laughs> No, no way. You're a fucking liar. I saw what I saw. Ugh. You're manipulating us just like you manipulated her. Tyler, you're not listening to this, are you? Be smart about this, Allison. Are you sure you want this to get out? You've got way more here to lose than he does. His name will be all but clear, but you... I mean, I already you'll told... You'll be a killer. What will your uncle say? I told him! He knows! And Michael? Hmm? Well, the whole town might turn on you. I'm getting gassed by him right now. Don't touch her. <clears throat> you know I'm right. Just get out of here, Tom. Tyler and I need to talk alone. Just please... Think twice before making any rash decisions. There are a whole lot of lives at stake here. Leave us the fuck alone. And never come back. This doesn't make any sense. What he, the story he's saying to me doesn't make sense. I don't think that Marianne pointed the gun at Tyler and said that she was going to kill him. I, I do believe like that is false. But I also don't... Like Tom's story is also not adding up. Also, if he like saw Marianne get stabbed, Allie, you okay? He didn't do anything about it to he like didn't step let the in. Get to you. Did why you? did he? Why was he so passive? Did you? What if he's right? I've been having all of these nightmares about that night, and they were a lot like how Tom said. And now, when I try to remember, that's all I can see. He's trying to mess with your head, and you're letting it work. No, it's more than that. Ever since we started digging, I... I haven't been able to shake this feeling like something's off. Something's off because he put this in your head. Don't let him get away with it. He might not be lying. We, we keep getting things mixed up. We remember totally different versions of the past. Those are just details. This isn't that. She was going to kill me. I'm not so sure anymore, Tyler. I'm stressed out. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the truth anymore. All, uh, I do believe Tom is lying about something.
it is interesting that she would still be holding the gun, though. Like, you feel like if she was trying to prove that she wasn't hurting somebody, she would put the gun down. So I am suspicious on why she's still holding the gun. She had a gun pointed at me. She chased me. She said she was going to kill me. Crap. She threatened Tom with those exact same words. With the same gun, on the same pier. The thing you said to Eddie the other day got thrown back at me. Don't you think it's possible that happened here too? I guess it's possible. Fuck. If it makes me make the choice myself, I'm gonna freak out. I, I don't know. I don't want to make this choice. I have literally no clue. This We're is never gonna know the truth, stupid. Because the second you walk away from something, that's it. Yeah. I feel like I we. I guess at this point, you just have to decide what you believe. No, please. Me? Yeah. You need to start dealing, Allie. And that means coming to terms with whatever version of the past feels the most true to you. No more running. Whatever you choose. I don't want to do this. 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 Please don't make me okay. do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this at all. I'm processing. I'm going to kill you! Okay. I have so many things to say about this. My first thing is that... The unfortunate truth is that I do feel like Tyler was actually not threatened. I don't think Tyler was threatened. But if I let Allison think that, then then she essentially killed her mom for no reason. How do you literally ever recover from that ever? I don't think that what Tom is saying is like entirely true. But I also with everything that we've like collected over the last like three chapters, I don't think that Marianne was going to kill her kids or like kill Tyler. That doesn't make sense to me, especially, especially since she had a child before us that had passed away and she's like already gone through that tragic death. It doesn't make sense why she would then kill her own child. Like that's just insane to me. I can't believe that. It doesn't feel like that is what would have happened. And then, and then we also found that book in her room that said how to raise a transgender child. So it doesn't make sense. But then if I let Allison believe that, then like... I'm going to kill you! Then like, she's miserable for the rest of her life because then she killed her mom for no reason, right? And like, what's done is done. The mom's dead. As much as I believe that... I'm not gonna hurt you. As much as I believe that Marianne did not threaten I'm Tyler... I don't want to believe Tom in anything he's saying. So I don't like that it specifically says believe Tom's version. I don't like that. 
because I don't want to believe Tom's version. I don't want anything to do with Tom at this point. I think Tom is a very bad person. I think he's scum. I think he's trying to blackmail me. I think there's a lot of red flags going on with Tom. Um, and um, as much as I believe that, I don't think their mom tried to actually kill Tyler. I think she did what she thought was actually happening in the moment and she was just a child. And um, I think that, you know, Mary Ann had a lot of secrets from them and I think she did a lot of things wrong. I don't think she necessarily tried to kill Tyler, but I think she did do a lot of things wrong. And I do think that she neglected her kids from what it feels like, the evidence that we've gathered. It feels like she, you know, was high and she wasn't able to provide food for her kids. And she also was too stubborn to reach out and ask for help in a lot of circumstances. So she's also not like entirely innocent. Um, and we do also know that she did give Tyler a hard time um, initially. So I think, I think we have to let her stick with the memory of her mom being mad. Otherwise, I mean, you're literally never going to recover from that. So I'm I think, I think, to kill you. I think we're going to stick with our memory because I think Allison de deserves to, to, to move kill on. I'm going to you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. No, don't do this. Alani's on my keyboard. What? Tom was lying. Marianne couldn't face being separated from her kids again. And the only way to make sure that never happened was for all of us to go together. I know it in my heart. I do think that she was going to try and kill herself regardless. So I can't actually believe that. Us. I know. I think she might have. That might have been the thing. Like she was going to kill right all, th all three of them. Dude, chill out. Do you want to go back inside? Yeah. I like that. I think I'm happy with my decision. As much as I don't think that's necessarily exactly what she would have been doing and like actually threatening, I do know that she was mentally unstable. And Tom's version makes less sense to me than than Allison's version. And I feel like you just got to go with your initial instinct. Hey, peep what I just found downstairs. What do you think? Will it have aged well, or just gone bad? Cheers, I guess. I can't believe Tom thought we'd buy that story. And that I almost did. Yeah. I still can't believe he and Mary Ann. What the hell did she see in him? She was probably just really, really lonely after she lost Leo. I could never get that lonely. Listen, with everything that's been going on, it got me thinking about our voice. Like, that maybe we should stop using it. What? I just don't trust it. And I think we'll be better off without it. This morning, I kept getting these horrible visions. Of you and Marianne and Eddie. Visions? Like our memories? Yeah, but, but different. It was all my worst thoughts brought to life. You were in my bedroom saying I abandoned you. Eddie called me a snake. I'm sorry. I should have been there for you. It's okay. I was the one who walked out. I just... I can't let that happen again. I... I don't think it will. Something's been pushing us to find answers. And now we have them. 
Maybe I'm wrong. And if it stays bad, we can stop. But I really want to keep what makes us us. So can we out Tom so that he doesn't get voted as mayor, please? The Mad Hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the Moon Hag, but she did not kill him, because even reduced to just one hand, he was too useful a servant. Lo, he plotted the day think? he would emerge, brothers and sisters, to once again hunt the wise princess and earn back his left hand. Always. And that is the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the wise princess from the Mad Hunter. I, you know what, the more I think about it, the more I, I think that the story of her killing herself and then killing them off makes more sense. Especially since we do know that she wasn't stable. Would she have actually gone through with it? I don't know. But I think there's no other way I want to digest this story. Like, I'm happy with thinking that's the case. It's not that she didn't love Tyler and she didn't love them. It's that she loved them so much. Don't, don't do that. Not okay to do that. But I think it's that she loved them so much that she was already mentally ill. And then the thought of them being, being taken away just like drove her over the edge. So I feel like it being self-defense. I can, I can deal with that. I think she loved them a lot. And too much. And was a little crazy. <sighs> Is that it? Is there more? Did we get a little... Anything else? Here we go. Six months later. Okay. Six months later. Shaved head. <sighs> One last look. I'm good to go. I like hey, the new fresh it's cut. Me. Hey, me. <laughs> House is empty. I'm getting ready to head out. So, last chance. Is there anything you want me to do while I'm in town? Listen, Ty, you're dropping off the keys with Tina, right? Yep. Gonna leave them at her office on my way to the ferry. Well, that's it then. How's Juno? Big and full of people, even without tourists. Michael's been writing up rules for the apartment. I need your support against his whole food policy. Just refuse to sign anything until I get there, okay? We're okay, here. but you better hurry. If he gets his way, we'll only have one small shelf for junk food. What? Heresy. I'm gonna need like twice that just for snack cakes after so my surgery pretty. next month. I know, right? This cannot stand. How are you? Good, actually. Really good. Yay! You? Same. You know. Emptying the house really cleared my head out. Thanks for doing that. The observatory really needed me this week. And after everything that happened, I, I just felt like I needed to keep some miles between me and Delos Crossing. No worries. You still loving your therapist? Gail, yes. I was actually just doing some letter writing she assigned me as homework. It really helped me get some perspective. That sounds awesome. Uh, did you see the article I sent you about Tom yeah, losing the election? Yeah, let's go. He uh, lost. Yes, I saw your message right before derby practice, so I didn't have time to read it. But I did cackle at the headline. <laughs> did you picture Tom's face whenever you went in for a block? <laughs> no, but that is a great idea. <laughs> Anyways, 
I'm glad Tessa finally left his ass. Yay, Mama's Tessa bitch. deserves better. Okay, I'm gonna hang up now. See you tonight. Okay, I'm gonna take one last walk through the house and then head to the ferry. Drive safe. Uh, pretty sure that's the only way possible in the old Allison mobile. Love you, Tyler. Love you. One last sweep. Hey, goblins, word in town is you guys finally sold the house. I came by tonight to help you fix what needs to be fixed, but there was nobody home. Are you gone already? Things change so fast these days. Anyways, you know where to find me if you want me to fix things. If you're still in town, I mean. It's getting late and I'm pretty tired. Oh, and I'm sorry for acting like the stupid ass I am. Everywhere I look, I think about what used to be. I've been trying to do better, but I think it might be too late for an old bear like me. Reference, old bear! <laughs> Not sure if this will reach you. It's getting late. Call me if you're still around. Be safe, Sam. P.S. I wish it was easy to fix everything as a boat. Got our old photos. Let's take all of these. I like all of these. Our mom's old bedroom's finally all cleared out. Okay. Man, seeing it empty is so weird. But at least it's the last time I'll ever have to. Ah, oh, very cool. Michael, must be a relief to finally be done with that place. No doubt. If traffic's not too bad, I should be back at our place around four. Wait, so do me and Michael live together? Aha, uh -huh, traffic in Delos. Only if the mailbox bandit escaped. Hey, I'm, on, I'm making that biscuit thing that you like. Damn, on my way. I'll probably take out some fire hydrants and stop signs. Don't die. I'll keep it warm. See you in a few. Wait, so are Tyler and... Or is it... Is it me and my sister and Michael living together? Or is it just me and Michael living together? I'm assuming that we're all going to live together, probably. Because that's what we had talked about, so. Delos Crossing most wanted escapes. The raccoon. The trash panda. I feel bad for Sam. Sam deserves better. I hope he has people looking out for him. Goodbye, room. Goodbye, room. Goodbye, man on the moon. For posterity. Oh, well, the house is very pretty. Am I going to get another <laughs> selfie? Oh, goblins. All right. I got one last place to visit before we wrap this all up and head out. I feel like I'm happy with this ending. I feel good. I feel good about this ending. Huh. Well, at least she finally dumped his ass. Dearest Tyler and Allison, I'm writing this letter from Juno International Airport while I will soon board a plane to Manila on a missionary assignment. I apologize for not coming in person to say goodbye, but I was called to make this, this decision alone and to carry it out on my own as well. I am sure you understand that sometimes we must follow without question the prompting of the spirit. I will not be coming back to Delos Crossing for some time. Before I go, there is something I feel I must confess to you both. Perhaps because I never found the strength to confront my husband. 
I have never been able to forgive Marianne for her betrayal. I truly did love you both like my own children, and I always try to forgive your mother for her unapologetic lifestyle. But when I discovered that you were, were the fruit of her affair with my Thomas, I wanted her to suffer like I was suffering, and I brought down on your house the wrath I never dared allow to unfold in mine. I mean, that's kind of fair. I've been deeply ashamed all these years, and I'm surprised how much better I feel with it out in the open. The greatest thing about truth is that peace, uh, oh, is the peace it brings to your life. I hope you can find it in your hearts to forgive me. You have taught me once again how to love and will bring you further in life. Something that Marianne had been trying to show me all along. Take care of each other always. In his steps, Tessa. I feel like I am so confident that I picked the right ending because if I hadn't also and I had chosen like Tom's version, then like Tessa would still be with Tom. Tom would have won being mayor. Tessa would still be with Tom. Sucks and she suck. she herself Tom says that like she you. was never able to find peace being with Tom and like hiding the truth. So I feel like a thousand percent I did what was right. Like I feel so so confident in this being the right outcome of the game. Or like the best outcome for me in the game. I want to visit. I'm pretty sure, right? This is where she buried Leo. Um, I'm sorry for leaving you alone out here. I wonder Bye, if that's Leo. why she had a ban bench right here. To sit and hang out with him. Goodbye, beautiful view. We are going to go make way better memories somewhere else. Goodbye, barn. Goodbye, puzzles. Goodbye, Leo. Goodbye, bad memories. We will carry the good ones with us. This is goodbye for real, I guess. Hey, Aaron, it's Ty, Tyler Ronan. I, uh, I thought I'd catch you on your break between sessions, but I guess you're going long with another rebel with too many causes. <laughs> I, I know I haven't reached out since I left Fireweed, but I just wanted to say, well, you were right about grief, about it going in circles. This morning, I was out on the porch, staring at the fog, and my mother, she, she just tumbled right out of me. But it was okay. It actually felt good to remember. Anyway, uh, give me a call back if you get a chance. I'll see you around. And thank you. so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the final chapter because there it was a lot going on that's for sure i do have a few things to say um uh, there's a lot going on in my head right now i literally just finished so my brain is kind of just processing everything that happened so in regards to the final decision where i chose either to believe allison's memory 
or Tom's memory, I do want to say something about that because my head is kind of just all over the place. Now that I've had some time to breathe, I really truly do believe that Mary Ann had no intent to actually kill Tyler or Allison. It really doesn't add up to me. It doesn't add up with the whole addict and the letter that they left Tyler and Addison. It doesn't make sense that she would leave that there for us to find if she did think that, you know, or if she did have the plan to kill us. So I, I did mention this kind of in the beginning of the game where it kind of felt to me that Marianne was just going to kill herself. And I do think that is what she still was planning to do. However, I do stand by the fact that I don't like Tom. Tom was a really shitty person and he also treated everyone around him really poorly. And obviously he kept still trying to hide the secret and if we would have never found out the facts ourselves, it would have just never, ever come out. So I think that's also a huge reason that I didn't want to believe in Tom's memory because I didn't know if, if I chose to go with that, if, you know, he would become mayor still, if, if Tess was going to stay with him. I didn't know what the repercussions were going to be of that. And also, I didn't think that Allison or Tyler deserved to believe that their mom was entirely innocent because then, you know then they have to live with the fact that they probably killed their mom for no reason. And I don't think that they deserve to live with that fact either. So although I do believe that Marianne was going to KMS, I do still think that Tyler and Allison were under, like genuinely under the impression that their mom was going to kill Tyler on that dock. So, you know, you have these 11 year old kids who have a mom that's been neglecting them, kind of acting out the last few months and you know what allison did in that time she thought was a form of self-defense she thought that that was what was right and i don't think that she again or tyler deserves to unpack all of that like what's done is done she probably would have killed herself off anyways i don't think they need to go throughout life with this massive weight on their shoulders i think it's very clear that marianne loved them a whole whole ton and I'm really happy that they got their answers in that, um, knowing that their mom did love them. So again, I don't think, ideally, I probably wouldn't have chose Allison's memory or Tom's memory. I didn't like either of them because again, I didn't really want to give Tom the quote unquote, like win in believing his story, especially because he was like trying to blackmail us there at the end. It just, it didn't feel right choosing his memory. And as much as I don't agree with the full truth, of Allison's memory, I do feel like that's more of what they deserved. And we can also see that like Tess heals at the end and separates from him, which I think was probably the right thing to do anyways. So I'm happy, I'm happy with my ending. I feel good in it. Was it the right thing? I don't know, I feel happy with it. Hopefully you guys aren't mad at my decision, but regardless, thank you guys for watching along and I hope you guys enjoyed and we're going to start a new game very, very soon. So keep your eyes out for that. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.